The 93X half ass Morning Show podcast is sponsored by Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Install a new furnace and AC combo and save up to $3,000 with manufacturer and utility rebates along with Standard Heating's discount. Visit standardheating.com. The 93X half ass Morning Show. 93X. Every man wonders about the size of their penis. Laying a bed alone at night or in a hammock with a parrot. <laughs> You start thinking, do I have a small penis or just gigantic legs? I don't know. <laughs> Luckily, there is a test. The first time you show it to your girlfriend or fiance or press it up against a bus window or something, <laughs> when someone sees it for the first time, you want a reaction. You want some excitement. You want another language, if possible, like, <gasps> Santa Maria! Ay, papi! Oh, no! Oh, no! Guard, let me out! Guard! <laughs> I'll talk. That's good. But if someone looks at it and the first thing out of their mouth is, oh, look. That's not good. Time to buy a Corvette. We're a good morning, sunshine. Okay. It's Wednesday. We made it to Wednesday. It's hump day. Showtime. Yeah, F me running. It's that time again. Thanks for listening to the 93X Half-Ass Morning Show. As we settle in here now on a Wednesday at 540 in the godforsaken AM. Josh, we begin the day here. A day where my Timberwolves are up two games in a best-of-seven series, which is exciting. It is exciting. That was fun last night. Up two games to none in a best-of-seven series. You had a good time watching the basketball game? I got to say, the last six quarters of basketball I've seen from the Wolves, best they've played all year, <laughs> and, and from what I've seen at least. Just the last six quarters? Six quarters. What, how much time did you uh, put in on the Wolves before the playoffs Like started? the whole season? Yeah. Exactly zero. Zero quarters. Yeah. No, <laughs> zero quarters. Mm-hmm. But I'd say the last six were very impressive. Best you've seen yeah. all year. I wanted to ask you something. So I've really enjoyed, and I, you know, I, I read about the games, um, obviously much different, but I read about every game just to kind of see what happens and see clips if they're, you know, like an amazing dunk or a, an amazing defensive play by like Anthony Edwards. He hits his head on a dunk, that kind of stuff. I watch all those videos. <laughs> But what I've really liked watching in the playoffs is how much they cheer for each other, and the team genuinely seems to like each other. I mean, everybody stands up. They're pointing at each other, making hand signs, which I don't understand. I don't know what they mean. (laughs) Hopefully they're not offensive. But that's been really cool to see all the support they give each other. I'm glad you noticed, and it's kind of cute that you noticed that. That's part of what draws me to the team as well. Yeah, absolutely. That's part of what draws me to the Timberwolves is they do seem like a really tight group of buddies that have a great time playing basketball yeah, together. Yeah, just not really selfish dudes. They're cheering for each other in the post-game comments. They're always poking uh, or pointing to somebody else that yeah. had a great game. I yeah. mean, even yeah. the big stars are saying, yeah, you know, it's a team game, and look at this guy. And it seems genuine. It doesn't seem like they're pandering. It seems like they really are supporting each other. And I got to say, of the other teams in the league that I've watched this year, Uh-oh. <laughs> I don't see the same thing out of them. <laughs> Now, I realize in the playoffs here, the Suns are, you know, they're getting whooped, and they're probably surprised. We didn't expect this, they're thinking. Yeah. You know, Kevin Durant's like, oh, my gosh, I'm balding, first and foremost. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And then yeah. I'm getting my butt kicked over I, here. So I, I, look, I look 57 years old. Yeah, I'm a lot uh, younger. Even though I'm 33 <laughs> yeah. or whatever, right. Oh, my gosh, really? He's only 33? I, I mean, in, oh. in that wheelhouse. <laughs> oh. You don't know. No, I mean, yeah, wow. he's, he's got – someone could look it up. I'm not exactly sure how old Kevin Durant is, but he's always looked – much older yeah, uh, than 35. he really, 35. 35. Yeah. I, I'm balding in a weird way, he you might know, be thinking. It is a weird <laughs> uh, weird way that he's uh, losing his hair. That's really cool that you've been uh, been tuned into that because, as I already said, that's one of my favorite things about the Timberwolves. And, of course, you know, when you only got 15 guys, it's easy to be bonded like that as opposed to a much bigger roster like football or, or uh, hockey, um, although their roster isn't, you know, massive. But, but still... Um, and as you've said, you haven't seen that out of any of the other teams that you've watched in the NBA this season. The whole league. When wow. the list includes the Phoenix Suns. <laughs> yep. And that's the end of the list. Yes. Outside uh, of the Timberwolves, of course. I think it is an, an original, unique thing about the Wolves. 
Sure. I'm in the same boat as you, Josh. Um, but specifically, I like uh, Anthony Edwards' attitude. Because, I mean, obviously he's so great and he's such a star, but it doesn't seem like he lets that affect how he plays with the rest of his team. He has a lot of infectious joy that Anthony Edwards does. Yeah, he's just watching his face is entertaining. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, Chris Finch, the head coach, is entertaining for me to watch um, because uh, he really never appears to be having any fun at all. <laughs> he looks miserable. He's always kind of right. He's in the same mode the entire time. Who's the bearded coach? Like a young-looking guy, a bearded coach. You see him a lot. They yes. show him a lot. He's standing um, up. Joe, uh, Joe Boylan. What, so what does he do? You know, uh, my my best guess is uh, I think he's well, you know, just an assistant coach. I think he specializes in the details, like how many timeouts we have. Should we replay that? Should we review that? So you that know? yeah, that's when they've been showing him. Like yeah. he's the guy that says we got to challenge that. Like a quality control guy, where I think he's just a, a brainiac that sits behind the coaches and uh, and kind of. Uh, Pays attention to the details. He's fun to watch. Always clapping. Yep. Always on his feet. <laughs> He's got to smile a lot. Uh, more anxiety than hair. Jesus brings up a very good point, and it's something we've discussed before in the history of sports. It's the NBA has really come a long way since they uh, the days of playing with a wood ball. Uh. <laughs> you know, the origination of that. A call back to a joke earlier this week. Very funny. More anxiety than hair. Jesus. As always. The wooden ball era was uh, it was a slow moving mm -hmm. uh, era of basketball. Uh. I saw Cisco there last night. The uh, I don't know if he's won a Grammy, but uh, I think he's won some awards. The uh, artist Cisco, Cisco. the song song guy. Yeah. He lives yeah. here in town. I was going to ask if he still lives here. Didn't he live in Brooklyn Park for a while? His wife's that, from here. That maybe Maple Grove. I mean, I'll look it up. I'm pretty sure he still lives here. I haven't heard otherwise. So yeah, I uh, saw him. How exciting! That was pretty exciting for me. I was like, that's the thong song guy. Did you holler to everyone else in the house, hey, everyone, get to the television quick. It's Cisco. Well, actually, it was my <laughs> wife that pointed it oh, out. Oh, your wife noticed that it was Cisco. She noticed it was Cisco. Oh, I'm glad you're... And, I, and I'm like, from KS95? And she's like, no, that's Crisco <laughs> on TV. That's Cisco. The guy that sings about the thongs. Gives me a good feeling, Cubby. It does. You know how passionate I am about the Wolves. It gives me a good feeling that now I know you're there with me. Um, although, you know, you're in your um, wonderful home and I'm in my... We're not watching the games together, but I know that you we are... We are together in the universe. You're synced up. I am. Um, with uh, all the excitement that I'm feeling over this ball club. I've enjoyed the team... Uh, the last two seasons because of your excitement. I, uh, what you're excited about, I get. I want to be excited about and support your love of the Timberwolves. What a pal. I, I do like to read about them. Like I said, I watch the clips, but it is different. I mean, I know it's playoffs and they're playing out of their minds, but it's been a lot of fun. And yeah, the fans so, have been electric, too. Man, that's also been fun to watch. And I can't wait for next season where if they make the playoffs, I'll watch them again. Right, <laughs> right. The crowd has been off the charts. I yeah. mean, they're just having a riot down there. Uh, back to Chris Finch real quick. Um, we got plenty of time to talk about the Wolves later when Randy Shaver uh, swings by and uh, what's his nuts? Uh, uh, Brad Ryder. Brad Ryder. Jesus. But one more note on Chris Finch, um, who, you know, as, as much fun as his team has out there and as bonded as they all seem, and I all I believe it's all legitimate. Uh, they wear Chris Finch out because I think <laughs> I think that, that 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 there there are times when the team just disregards his advice altogether. And uh, did you did you all see early in the game when Rudy Gobert, who has no better skills at dribbling the basketball than Wapple, <laughs> <laughs> went the length of the court dribbling the basketball? Anyone with me? Do you yes. know that? Yep. Mm -hmm. And then he smashed into a member of the Phoenix Suns and, and just kind of willy-nilly threw the ball towards the – luckily the ball went in and a foul was called, and he, he set up for a three-point play. But there's Gobert at, what, 7-2, whatever he is, attempting to dribble the basketball. It's an absolute gong show <laughs> watching him. When the whistle blew, did you see Chris Finch's reaction? Anyone? Yes. Do mm -hmm. you remember – so Dana saw it. He, he bent – you know, he's standing up straight, just like your dad did when you did something ridiculous when you were six years old. He bent over at the waist and just went. <sighs> okay. oh, yeah, yeah, I did see that. Yep. 
When that, that when was that, very funny. When that play started, you're just kind of like, well, this has disaster written all over it. And, you, the, and then somehow it ended up working. And I bet that almost annoyed Chris Finch more because he's like, okay, like he got away with it. But God, he, he didn't learn a lesson there. Just so <laughs> exasperated, Finch could not hold himself straight up anymore. He had to bend at the waist and let out all the oxygen in his lungs. <laughs> just like when you were six and you spilled paint on the floor, whatever, yeah. you know. That was so funny because, you know, the whole time Gobert's dribbling, Finch has got to be screaming, you're not a point guard, pass the basketball. <laughs> there are times when you look at him and go, that's a professional athlete, huh? Isn't but, that something? Yeah. Then there's other times he'll remind you why he is. Well, you know, uh, welcome everyone else to the bandwagon that I have jumped on. <laughs> it's fun to see how excited the town is. You're the leader of the bandwagon. Well, I wouldn't call myself the leader of anything, but I, I'm, I'm a very enthusiastic member of this bandwagon, which I've jumped on at the very last second. <laughs> Dan Fogelberg sang that song about the leader of the band. He did. Josh is the leader of the band wagon. <laughs> <laughs> so we were talking about Cisco earlier. I was trying to see if he still lives in town here. I couldn't find that, but I did see that he has uh, written two books. Cisco, the man behind the thong, and Cisco's perfect Christmas. Uh, the man behind the thong. <laughs> Might pick you guys up on a copy for Christmas this year. That's awesome. Well, we, we should get Cisco in studio. That's a good idea. What's up with Cisco? Um, no. No? <laughs> You're saying, you, you say no now, but what if he just walks right? I bet you'd be excited to I'm see Cisco. I'm kidding. I have nothing against Cisco. Um, bring him in. Bring so, him in. we just, I think we just start out going, thong song, huh? Yeah. <laughs> what else is going on? So, you, uh, you live here, huh? All right. So, like I said, we, we woke up on a day here where the Timberwolves are up two games in a best-of-seven series. It's also a day, Josh, where a guy called Girth Master is trending on Twitter. I um, saw Girth Master, but I did not click. I, I read about Gir Girth Master, but again, I did not click on a link from Ashley that involved genitalia. So it's, it's a hell of a day. Yes, Ashley has fallen into the bad habit of sending us nothing but pure filth ever since she mastered the art of sending emails. Um, so, right, that, that this is what we're, uh, what we're looking at today. And I did uh, The Wolves, uh, everyone's talking about the Wolves, and everyone's talking about Girth Master. Well, Wolves have big D energy, certainly. Sure. So, and Girth Master legitimately has big D energy from what I'm reading, but I did like that you sent it to the boss as well, Ashley, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, and he just responded, why did I click on this? Why? With a bunch of uh, whys at the very end of that. Uh, yeah. As if he's falling off of a cliff. Yeah, okay. he was very, it seemed like he really regretted clicking on that. Let so me, that was another reason for me not to <laughs> click on it. I warned you guys. I didn't very click much. on anything. Let me just tell you what I know here, you know, for our listening audience, uh, of course. Um, again, um, there's a guy called a Girth Master who's... It's the dream we all dream of in the year 20 plus 24. He's trending on Twitter, okay? Um, I didn't look up Girth Masters pictures or whatever is out there. I just know what I've said out loud uh, so far. Here's more. It's, there's not much more, but here's what, what I have in front of me. And if you're a Twitter uh, dork, uh, go ahead and, and look it up. Josh, do you think maybe you'd, you'd, you'd look it up while we're sitting here? Or I'm not trying to pressure you into anything because I don't want to look at Girthmaster uh, either. Yeah, I, I'll take one for the team, uh, I guess. I would rather Cisco walk in right now uh, <laughs> than... So, uh, oh, it's gone. At least the... Uh, oh, maybe I have to sign in here. So this is a guy who apparently uh, his, uh, his tallywhacker, he took a picture of it next to a, a wine bottle. Oh, and the girth is similar to that of a wine bottle. Does that link still work for you, Ashley? Yeah, it does. Yeah. Um, and this, so this is why. Um, this is why. <laughs> Dana just saw I just it. looked over at Ashley's computer. A little penile noir. <laughs> is it uh, disgusting? It's just a big dong next to a wine bottle. <laughs> it's insane. I don't know how this is humanly possible. Is it all real, or is this a damn AI animation trick? What do you know over there? Oh, it is real, because if you go through his Twitter, you can see it um, in action. Oh. Mm-hmm. Looks like he's got an OnlyFans as well, of course, because everyone does. 
Girthmaster, is he a young man? Uh, he looks to be about in his uh, 30s, 40s, so yeah. Is this how he makes his living? Uh, he's Girthmaster, and he goes town to town, and and, uh, and 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 he's put on display. Looks like he's making up to 80 grand a month. That's what I saw too. Oh, so you're talking about the OnlyFans gimmick? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, is I there can't a, log in, Ashley. Well, I suppose that's a happy accident. Yeah. <laughs> do you want me to? Do you want me to screenshot it and send it to you, or are you go? I mean, not really, but yeah, you probably yeah, should. Yeah, you, you know, <laughs> you're gonna get some eyes on this. Would you? I, I don't know if I'm going to look, Josh. Would you look for me? <laughs> yeah, I will. <laughs> okay. Lake is, Street Handshake Jesus reminds me. Yes, Girthquake is one of the nicknames for my penis. Mm-hmm. I also have Private First Class Terry Tickles. That's the one most people know me by. Oh, my God. I love those. Those are the two greatest penis nicknames ever. Um, but, Josh, you're, you, what did you say? Your wife gave you those penis nicknames? No, I came up with them. You came extra up with extra douchey, right? Of course, you give yourself your own nickname or your penis. It's What's douchey about coming up with a nickname for your own penis? Well, Girthquake certainly is sarcastic, right? That's like I doubt a, that. A, a, a portly gentleman thin or something like that, right? Or uh, skinny or something. It'd be kind of cool if Girthmaster walked in here right now. I could say <laughs> yeah. I, I would. I would have to introduce, you know, Girthmaster. This is Girthquake. Girthquake. This is Girthmaster. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I sent it to you, Josh. Oh, okay. is there? Careful, because when you open up the email, it's just going to be right there. <laughs> All right, let's all listen for Josh's reaction as he opens oh, up. Oh my God! <laughs> oh, are you serious? Right? Do you think? I mean, is that okay? Is that a trick? Is okay? My God. Oh, is no, that they're... a real wine bottle? Yeah. <laughs> I don't like where the bubble is in that wine. I got to be honest with you. You know, you can get the little tiny uh, wine bottles. I hope it is that. That's what I was wondering. Yeah. Okay. No, he's got more photos of him in action on his Twitter page. Now, that. I, I got to say, it's not as big as I had thought. Well, see, I don't know what a wine bottle. I have to look. I, I don't know what a wine bottle looks like, to I, be honest with you. I can't turn this. You might have to Almost see. like a bowling oh, pin. A bowling pin? Yeah. Uh, let's turn. <laughs> I'll get up. I'll, I'll, I'm going to get up. I'm going to walk. What is so funny over there? The, just Josh trying yeah, to I'm turn try, his monitors I can't turn around, my monitors. and then, like, one time I would see the penis, and then it would go away, and then I'd see the penis again, and it's gone. All right. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. It, it, is it uh, not as big as you thought either? No, it's not as big as I thought. Yeah. I mean, hey, this, this thing's thick. That's for sure. But, it's uh, so scary looking. He uh, he should be proud. <laughs> scary looking. But but it, I thought it would be more circus sideshow than it ended up being. Yeah. It's alive. Is there a Mrs. Girthmaster? Does anyone is there, Dana? Are you looking at a bio or anything? Oh yeah. Is it a husband oh. wife thing? It looks like a lot of different girls that he was posing with. A lot of uh, what? A lot of different women in his Twitter page. If you scroll through some of the other photos. Oh okay. So he appears to be a single man. Yeah. Um, spreading it around. Stomach kind of hurts. <laughs> I'd imagine if you were with him, yours would too. Probably. Yep. Is girth where it's at, Ashley? Like, say, if you were to uh, have to choose uh, a, a, a rod from a vending machine, um, <laughs> would you go girth? Uh, no, definitely you, not. You would not go girth? No. Length or, or just... Uh, you, you want a good mix. I want a good mix. Okay. Yeah. Well, but you have to choose. Have to choose? Yeah. Like, like uh, girth versus length? That's exactly the question. Hmm, in that case, I'd have to go girth. Right. Girth. Okay. Yeah. Now, what about girth versus curve? What kind of curve are you <laughs> interested in? <laughs> yeah, curve, but it's got to curve, uh, curve upwards. Up. Okay. Yep. Mm. <sighs> yeah, I hear that a lot you know, from, from ladies, whether it be in person or... Maybe reading a, a nasty article on a website. Um, nine out of ten of them say girth is where it's at, skis. So, girth master uh, has a built-in audience. Steelers fan Jesus has a uh, name for his penis. He calls it the octagon. Uh, he also names his testes. The left one is Kenneth Noisewater. <laughs> <laughs> and the right one is Dr. James Westpaul. <laughs> <laughs> And apparently, if ladies play their cards right, they can meet the whole gang. <laughs> mm. uh, Snot Rocket Jesus says, Girth, Girth Worm Jim might be a better name. Uh, that's a great game. What is that? What Earthworm Jim. What about, what, what does that mean? It's an old video game. Oh. It was great. A video game called Earthworm Jim. Yep. This guy would be Girth. Birth, what a- uh, bougie butthole Jesus uh, wants to know. He said he, according to his Twitter, this Girthquake guy, or what was it? Girth what? 
Girth uh, Master. Master. Girth Master. Uh, he said, according to his Twitter, which I definitely didn't look at, he's Australian. <laughs> and uh, he wants to know, Nick, what would that sound like if you were to talk to this Australian guy? Oh, my goodness. An Australian character. Yeah. Um, with a giant girthy penis. Uh, he'd say, uh, take a look, eh? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? You want to try it out? <laughs> it's spot on. That's good. Type 1 Cop Jesus uh, said his co-worker apparently has sent that little gem to him, Ashley, that photo. Ah, you're welcome. So it's okay, I guess, for co-workers to send it to each other, much like you did last night. Yeah. yeah. Ah, so, yes. Wisco Maple Syrup Jesus said there is a Miss Girth. Uh, girth, what again? I'm sorry. You said master. A uh, girth Master. It's a uh, Miss Grand Canyon. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> It's all anyone's talking about, so you might as well take a look. Everybody. Just pain. Painful. It's all I can think when I look at it. Prediction? Pain. What movie? Rocky III. Girthmaster might hit that audio every night before he and the wife go to bed. <laughs> I think that might be the only Rocky I've only seen once. Rocky III. Rocky really? Yeah. You've only seen once. Pretty sure. Where the others... Multiple times. Certainly. Rocky Four by far. Rocky Balboa might be number two, actually. Mm -hmm. The second one I've seen the most. Very interesting. Very interesting, Josh. I'd have to say that Rocky Three and Rocky Five are my least favorite. Y yeah, I, mine too. But I've watched Rocky Three many, 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 many times because of, uh, well, I mean, the obvious reason, Sylvester Stallone. Um, but I've watched Rocky Three many times because it features Mr. T. Mm -hmm. It features Hulk Hogan. And Thunder then, of lips. course, pardon me? Thunder Lips. Yes, Thunder Lips, the ultimate male against the ultimate meat mall. Dana, we all know the movie. But the reason why I enjoy Rocky Three the most is because uh, I love the scene when Mickey dies. You like it when anybody dies. <laughs> <laughs> you love it. Ugh. It's my imitation of the scene where Mickey dies. It's very sad for the majority of us. I, you felt differently. I'll have to rewatch Rocky Three. Do what you got to do, yeah. Cubby, if you have time. All watching those... all that Timberwolves coverage. <laughs> Let's see when can I sneak it in because I got to watch my wolves. Friday, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and then they play against Sunday. So maybe Saturday I can sneak that in. Oh, oh man. What's that? 9.30 starts. I know. I know. But it's a Friday night. Arf. You should be all right. We uh, should, we Friday should all nights are almost the worst for me for whatever reason. Oh, I... I you know what I'm talking I'm the same way. Are you really? Fr Friday nights, I'm pretty beat. It's my most tired. I'm pretty beat, but I can I can push through it, I think, for the... Uh, the Timberwolves. Very disappointing for all those people that invite me to all those parties every weekend. <laughs> well, you're actually doing a nice thing by not going to any of them because if you went to, say, one or two of the parties that you got invited to, you'd make the rest of the people feel bad that you, you didn't pick their party instead. That's true. And I, I recently learned you have to be invited to a party to, <laughs> before going to a party. <laughs> people told me uh, you showed up somewhere that you weren't wanted, Dana. Oh, I did? Yeah. What it happened? was your, your parents' house. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it was your birthday party. Yeah, they changed the locks. Yeah, they didn't want you there. They actually moved and didn't tell me, so the, the new people that lived in their old place were very confused. <laughs> Sir, or do we need to call the cops? <laughs> oh, Mexico City Jesus said his penis nickname is Harry Houdini because it always finds a way to escape his pants. And Harry, of course, is H-A-I-R-Y. That is gross. <laughs> Absolutely gross. Uh, what else is going on around here? Wednesday morning. Brad Ryder, Randy Shaver at 7.30. More so, uh, free sod to give away today, that free grass. Pay attention. I, yeah, or more an, an opportunity to win that, I should say. Yes, pay attention for that. With you uh, watching all this basketball, Josh, have you been spending a little more time uh, on your Papa Shot uh, mini basketball hoop down in the basement? When I let the dogs out, yeah, I'll, I'll play a little bit. I'm getting better. You are? Yeah. Like it's going in, so we have a side-by-side -side one, 
It's going into the correct <laughs> net. <laughs> Where before, a lot of times it wouldn't. When it went in, it, it wouldn't really go in the right, the one I'm aiming for. That's great. Yeah. You might, so you probably haven't heard this because I know you're good at Papa Shot, but mm -hmm. if you're, well, maybe you've played with somebody who's not very good. If you're, uh, do you ever turn the announcers on? I almost, don't every time. Almost never. Yeah, I rarely do. Simply because when I started, I had it on every time, and they kind of rip you if you're not making it like, you know, the goal's to get it in the net, you know, that kind of thing. Right. Uh, we, we have a dartboard that does the exact same thing. The dude's just a prick on it. Oh, it's like, a... oh, you thought you could get it, but you suck. Oh, like, so they don't say you suck, but yeah. they're, they're very demeaning. Yeah, he says you suck. It's crazy. <laughs> that and sounds like I, fun. That I, sounds like fun to have yeah. a trash-talking uh, board. Yeah, and then, uh, like, there's options where you can turn it off, but that doesn't work, so you can never turn it no, off. Oh, you're stuck with it? Yeah, oh, and I geez. feel like that's a great company joke. Oh, you want to shut him up? Too bad. Yeah. <laughs> I almost, uh, see, with the Papa Shot game, what Josh is talking about is you can turn the game on, and then you can play a series of games. Oh, God, I don't know. That, you know there's maybe eight four, games. Four, five, something. six different versions of the game. Um, yeah, and, and the guy, if you miss uh, too many shots, he says, you know, what's the matter with you? Yeah. I never turned it on. My, my basic gimmick is I, I just try to see how, how, how many shots in a row I can make. Um, and then I actually, this is going to sound silly, but, you know, when you're 52 years old and you're not much for going to the gym and all that silliness, I kind of, that's part of my exercise that I get uh, when I have the chance. I kind of jog in place. I know you're going to chuckle your asses off, but I kind of jog in place and just shoot <laughs> Papa Shot for 15, 20 minutes, and that's my version of exercise. Well, you know what I'm talking about? I yeah. mean, it, it is. If you're not used to something like that, your shoulders can burn a little bit, right? I mean, um, it's, uh, I could see how that would be, especially if you're jogging in place. So that uh, I almost never turn the game on. I'm not interested in seeing... How many, you know, you know, how quickly you can dump shots in in 30 seconds. I, you know, I don't, not interested. I just kind of just test my accuracy. Uh, my, my, my current uh, high is uh, 47 uh, consecutive shots made. Yeah, I'm, nice. shy, I'm shy of that by about 42. Oh! <laughs> oh, geez, Jesus said he plays those Papa Shot announcers while he has sex as motivation. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be something if the You're guy... really getting it in the hole there, buddy. Right. I mean, you've got... You know, there are certain statements that that announcer could make that you know, play perfectly into basketball and sex, like Josh just said. Get it in the hole, right? Uh, but imagine if the announcer suddenly turned purely sexual on you. <laughs> that would be frightening. You call that a penis? Yeah. You know, something like that. Uh, double dribble gross. Oh, oh. yucky. It's all fun. All fun. <laughs> all right, we got to get moving. You're a terrific crowd. Thanks for tuning in. It's a great day this morning. Like we started off talking about the Wolves are doing wonderful. And uh, all Twitter is talking about is a guy uh, called Girthmaster. Uh, look into both. We'll take a break, and we'll be back before you know it on the Half-Assed Morning Show. Half-Assed Morning Show. They're loud. They lose control. They do their little circus act. They're a nuisance. 93X. Our experienced and certified technicians at Standard Heating have been trusted to keep our fellow Minnesotans comfortable and confident for over 90 years. We're ready to do the same for you, providing comfort you deserve since 1930. It is the triple savings spring sale at Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Install a new furnace and AC combo and save up to $3,000 with manufacturer and utility rebates along with Standard Heating's discount. That's a trifecta. Visit standardheating.com. What companies would you want to work for? Just Capital is a nonprofit that tracks which companies are a force for good. Companies like Bank of America, which just earned the prestigious Just Capital 2024 seal. Bank of America is ranked number one in the banking industry and number one for their ongoing commitment to workers, offering best-in-class benefits, including a minimum wage of $25 an hour by 2025. Visit JustCapital.com to learn how a just business is a better business. Furnished by Just Capital. Stupid news on the Half-Assed Morning Show. Absolutely wonderful. Welcome back to the show. Stupid News is ready to go. And we'll dive right into it in just a minute. Oh, a couple of text messages I wanted to fire. 
your way. Legion of Boom Jesus has checked into the program. Appreciate that. We were talking earlier about how Josh is a brand new Timberwolves fan. Playoffs started and Josh has been all over it. Did he watch during the regular season? No. No. But he's watching now Not and he's all game. in. All in. So, got a text here from a listener. Uh, two sets of twins, Jesus, texted in and said, he, he listens to the show, this guy. He knows about you, Cubby. He says, so now Josh and his wife have to fan themselves like old southern women while they watch the Timberwolves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're not kidding. Sometimes I'm like, wait, you know there's a basketball game going on. She's like, no, no, no I'm looking at the bench guys right now. Uh, She's, <laughs> she always picks out a favorite. She loves those pro athletes. And uh, what else do I have here for you? Oh, uh, barbecue guru electrician Jesus also checking in. Uh, this is great. Uh, it's okay. Doesn't matter when you when you come around to it. The more the merrier on the Wolves bandwagon. Uh, barbecue guru electrician Jesus said, "I'm not a huge basketball fan." Last night he watched his first Timberwolves game. Oh, great! He had a good time. It's a good one to watch. And I think a lot of folks here in Minnesota would agree with you. He says. Something about that Booker kid, I kind of wanted to punch him in the mouth. Oh, my mm. gosh. No kidding. Oh, yeah. Those shirts that I'd imagine father and son were wearing, you know, it's a white out. Right? Most people are wearing white, and they have Booker's face where he's, like, crying. <laughs> yes. Ah, oh, those were great. Those, those two deserve some credit for those. Brilliant. That was awesome. Brilliant. Rick, I get, we have an update from retired and young Jesus. Um, if you were listening yesterday, you might remember he woke up to dog diarrhea all over the place. Oh, that's right. And yeah. we all felt bad for uh, he made his dog, Pinky, swear that there will be no more explosive diarrhea all over the bed. I didn't mention that. He crapped the bed, literally crapped the bed. Yeah, he did. Uh, and so retired and young Jesus said he spent a lot of time cleaning today. But he still said, hey, have a great show, which is a lot of pressure. But we'll do our best. But he was nice enough to think of us that guy's in been his through, time of need. He has. He's been through hell. He has been through hell. But the dog, Pinky, swore. Pinky swore. All right, we'll see how far that goes. Oh, man, the dog diarrhea, so bad. No, it's not good. So it's, explosive. It's not good. So smelly. Here we go. Here's your stupid news, and uh, we're starting off here. Here's something that we hope you really like. It says here, women, uh, although I doubt there are many, but women are handing over $500 to get uh, salmon sperm injected on up into their vaginas. And, the, and this gimmick is supposed to boost their sex lives. I don't know. Salmon Having sperm. Having sex with a salmon seems well, pretty Well, no, gross. you don't have to have sex with a salmon. Oh, I You'd... thought you... Did I misunderstand? Uh, yeah. And uh, I don't know how I can explain it. The salmon doesn't have to have sex with these women in order for the sperm to be transferred to their vaginas. <laughs> I'll take your word for it, I guess. Yeah, it's it's confusing. Yeah, it is. Imagine meeting someone for the first time. They ask you what you do for a living. You go, oh, I'm a salmon sperm extractor. Oh. I know a bull, a bull semen extractor. Do you? Yeah. Yeah, he bought his own bull for that purpose. He wanted me to go in on it with him. Number one, I didn't have money. Number two, I thought he was crazy. But then I found out he's actually making money with that kind of stuff. Wow. He's got a house, a car, yeah, uh, everything. He's got a carpal tunnel after a while. <laughs> you missed on that bull semen money, Josh. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> so some wacky aesthetic nurse, that's what they call her here in the story, an aesthetic nurse uh, by the name of Amanda as a party. Uh, she went ahead and told the local news in stupid England. Uh, she said, a lot of older women's come to me come to me. A lot of older women come to me and say that they are not having any kind of sexual arousal anymore. So, she says, we do the O shot. And they're reporting stronger and more frequent orgasms. Increased natural lubrication. Well, well, well. You know, my youngest made a joke about that yesterday. Uh, and... I'm trying to. Th I don't know if I can say it or not. He heard it on the bus, and mm. he, but he even admitted, "I have no idea what that means." Uh. Basically, saying uh, a person couldn't get a woman, you know, 
Mm. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Lubricated. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. He don't know what he's talking about, but he's just dumping jokes all over the house. And I said, do you know what you said in front of your mother? Your mom's right there. You said he said like that in it. front of his mom? Yeah, in front of both of us, and then said, at least he admitted, I have no idea what that means. Where is he? So <laughs> it, it's the bus where oh, he's getting bu- all this blue humor. Yeah, so we, uh, up until this year, we didn't live in an area where the bus, he could ride the bus, so we drove him to school. And he has been afouled since taking this bus. It's been an awakening. Yes, it has. Because, because, you know, there's older kids on the bus. He's one of the younger kids, and he's learning all these things, including that crass joke he told at the dinner table last night. He's telling a, 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 a lubrication joke. Yeah. But he explained the context where he heard it, and I must say, if I could, uh, the way my son used it was a lot funnier than the way he heard it. He just didn't realize why that was funny. Because you don't work blue at the house. I... I Rarely, almost never, maybe just around the wife, but very infrequently even then. She's got a trucker mouth. I don't have that. Does your wife have a filthy mouth? Yeah, she smells a lot of truckers. I think she, she caught it. I've never heard her talk filthy. She, well, she doesn't have a great filter. Um, you know, she's kind of quiet oh, around him sometimes. Does she have no filter? <laughs> <laughs> Not like that. Um, I have no filter. I mean, let's just say she stubs her toe. Yeah. Right? Mother F? Uh, yeah, oh, everything. Loud, doesn't matter who's around. Like, for me, I, I might just be like, ah, and tartar sauce or something. <laughs> I can hold it in or fudge might be the worst. But, yeah, she can't. She can't. Con- she admits it now. The C word? She, she has been using that lately. Yeah. The one-syllable C word. Yeah. Dude. Yeah, and, and she's even spelled it and added a Y. Can we turn? Did you say love that word? Can we turn Ashley's microphone on? So what, when you get, her compression's just super bad. I don't and, understand the terminology. And, and anytime she's talking, she like anyone else is talking. Well, just come on just, in here, Ashley. Yeah. just come on in here. I, I, Maybe it'd be better. Yeah. You sound like you're on Dana's shoulders in the next room. <laughs> you know, so come on in here. I don't know the. I don't understand compression. If you don't mind, if you're. Uh, Listening to the show, if you don't mind, could you text us? Let us know. Is it, is it as bad on your end as it is on ours? Because I'd be curious to know. Like when Ashley, you heard Ashley, was she just super quiet? Like the music, it, is it bouncing up and down? If you don't mind, I apologize for do this on the air, but I'd love to know if it's just us. Let's get back to this vaginal story. It's vaginal in nature. Again, women are handing over 500 bucks to get salmon sperm injected into their vaginas and it's supposed to boost their sex lives. The women apparently get greater sexual arousal once fish jid is introduced to their uh, virginas. I got a question for you, Josh. Is there a risk with this procedure of impregnating a woman with a deformed, evil, half-salmon Half human baby, like an evil mermaid of sorts, dude. Yeah, I, I, I would think there's something to that. Okay, Ashley, I think you already sound better. I heard you laugh. Yeah, that that was that's frustrating. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so it says here, um, this O shot. That's what they call the the salmon sperm injection, uh, non-surgical. Uh, like I said, intended to rejuvenate the vagina. And after about two to four sessions, they say here, you got a whole new vag. Hmm. And it's just a raring to go. You know, a lot of these things when you talk about these uh, medical miracles or, you know, just weird things like this, you wonder, how did they come up with it? And who's the first person that agreed to it? (laughs) (laughs) Welcome to this clinical trial. We'll pay you $250 for your time. We're just going to shoot some salmon, salmon sperm up in you. So, yeah, I mean, if... I guess if you're desperate, right? If I was at a point where I just couldn't get aroused or, you know, have an orgasm or whatever, I'd, and they said, hey, you got to take this pill, just so you know, a, a salmon relieved himself in there of his own ejaculate. Would you, would you consume it? Maybe there's a level of desperation where I'd agree to be a trial of that. But I would also think they're trying to weed out the dumb people, right? <laughs> you, know, you know what I, pill that guy just took? Yeah. I don't know. It's a tough question. Um, you know, it depends on your age. It depends on how how enthusiastic you still are about having a sex life. Um, here's some more information for you as you try and tear into your breakfast. Uh, it says here, as people age, their skin often loses 
elasticity, which can lead to vaginal dryness. Ah, yes. Ah, that's and the worst. And painful sex. Have you noticed your skin? No, you're, you're 53. Two. Two. Okay, 52. Um, presumably, you will no, be 53. No, I'm two. <laughs> oh, you're two? Yes. yes. <laughs> you are so mature. I know. I know. It, it, it's been a hell of a two years. So let me ask you something. As a two-year-old, when did you start chewing tobacco? <laughs> when I was a, one week old. Is that right? Yes. Uh, yes, 52 years old. You were going to ask me. Have you noticed any skin elasticity, loss of uh, skin elasticity? Yes. Elasticity? Do you, do you want to know where? <laughs> yes, please. I've noticed. And this is the first spot on my body. And check it out. My body. Yeah. Uh, i been checking it out. It's something to see. Trust me. Uh, the first spot. And I wonder if any other people are going to uh, relate to this. Feel free to text in if you do. The first spot I noticed on my body where my skin has lost some elasticity and began to get kind of mushy and uh, under my arm skis. Yeah, yeah, me too. I've, the last few years, and it's been kind of going fast, I'd say. Do you want to see what we're talking about, Ashley? I kind of do, yeah. Josh and I, we'll get, our, we'll get our shirts off later and show you. <laughs> Perfect. How we've lost elasticity in our armpit skin. If you want to see, we'll show you later. But yeah, that's, that's where I've noticed it. But ladies, if you get this salmon shot, they say it has potent regenerative qualities that firms your skin. So apparently you'll be squatting over a mirror without fear to check yourself out like you're 20 years old again, ladies. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I'd probably give it a try if I was desperate enough. Yeah, I could, the desperation would make a big difference. Yeah. Um, have you, do you check yourself, Ashley, with a mirror or something like oh. that? Oh. Um, maybe like a handful of times in my, in my lifetime. The reason I ask is a buddy of mine was just telling me the other day, uh, he, his world changed for him with the uh, camera phones. Because if there's anything going on yeah. where he used to use a mirror, he can just take a little video and see what's happening. Yep. I, I, I've done that, definitely. Really? Now, his is hemorrhoid-related. Okay. Oh, mine's so not. He'll, <laughs> you know, he doesn't have to ask someone or go to a doctor necessarily to see if there's a real issue. I never in a million years would have thought that your cell phone camera or video maker would have benefited someone in that yeah. exact way. And I hate picturing him do it but i thought well there you go i mean so he'll take a photo of his anus yes and then bring it to the doctor's office and say just in case you don't get a close enough look here's what i found two days ago you know you can actually send that to them you i can, think i told you uh i had a a wiener doctor say hey you know if there's an issue just what just take a picture and send it to me I'm like i can't send a dick pic to anybody much <laughs> less a doctor boy there's a horrifying <laughs> uh how do you say this in the business a, a horrifying uh Email, uh, I, I lost the term. You, you kind of wonder, like... Inbox, this... that's the term. Yeah. That's a, that, that must be a horrifying inbox when your doctor clicks on all these b-hole and pecker right. pick. Right. And if you did send that picture, Josh, that's when you double, triple, quadruple check you have the right phone number or an email address. You yeah, don't, you you, don't want to misfire yeah. that one. And then you also, of course, you got to pick the angles, find the right lighting, all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff to really make it look good. The first time you squatted over a mirror, Ashley... Uh, was it a, a hell of a moment that you'll never forget where you go, I'll be damned, I had no idea I looked like that. Yup, 100%. So that's what they're seeing <laughs> yeah. down there. Was it just out of curiosity to see what it what was going on? Or did you, like me, I'm not trying to get too personal, but was there an issue that made you go, oh, I better take a look? The first time was curiosity. Um, and then after that, it was more like, all right, now that like shaving is happening, I wanted to make sure I was getting everything and that there wasn't, like, oh. some hidden hairs that I didn't know existed. So you get out the magnifying mirror at that yeah. point, right? Oh, I've never yeah. done I never considered something like that when manscaping. A uh, dude that I used to uh, bar gig with, a, a bartender at a bar that I used to bar gig at years ago, uh, He, when he was about 16, uh, his mother walked into his bedroom as he was squatting over a mirror. <laughs> oh, that's that's rough. rough. Yes. No. Uh, this text, uh, I wish I had a name um, for this text. There's no name here. Uh, the camera phone is nice to use, you know, when you're trying to take a peek at what's going on down there. But he said, all the likes scrolling across your screen is a little awkward. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let me get back to this now. We'll close out this topic. It's been fascinating, no doubt. I'm not in any real hurry. 
Um, but, uh, you know, there are other stories we need to get to. If this helps you at all, anyone who's considering using uh, salmon uh, spooge to rejuvenate their sex lives or their skin, fish semen uh, has been a skin care staple in Korea for many years. They're just covered in this stuff in Korea. Hmm. Sometimes they shoot the salmon into their faces. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> in Korea. I suppose there's a lot of places you could put it. That's one of them. That is one of them. Did you know this, Josh? Old uh, Jennifer Aniston once uh, said that she went through with a salmon semen facial. Yes, I do remember her talking about that. And she once said she will try almost anything to keep her skin looking young. She definitely looks young. Yeah, she's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's that's a secret. Clint Eastwood tried it once also, and he said, man, that really didn't work at all. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no. Uh, a text here says, I work for an OBGYN, and you'd be shocked as to the pictures we get sent to us. Oh. few people are saying, yeah, they were, the, the doctor told them the same as they told me. Go ahead. If there's ever something going on, you can just send a picture. Another person said that they were a little concerned because the guy gave him his personal email. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a lady who, uh, who has made babies texted in this morning uh, on the topic of squatting over a mirror um, so you can get a different angle of what your gear looks like on a Saturday night. Uh, this lady says uh, they warned her after she had a baby not to squat over a mirror anymore and see uh, what it looks like. And she says, by damn, they were right. Don't do it. <laughs> oh, that's terrifying. Yeah. Yeah, if they told me something like that, I would immediately go home and check it out. Yeah, you have to. <laughs> You'd say, holy Jesus, they were right. All right. I bet this would wear you out. A lady who has a rare medical condition here. She says she's permanently horny as a damned hoot owl. And she says it's ruined her life. She's a 21-year-old. A 21-year-old that can't get enough sex. I've never heard of that before. That is rare. No, this is really uh, unbelievable. Uh, The gal goes by the name of Scarlett Wallen. She caught something called persistent genital arousal disorder, PGAD. You can call it PGAD if you'd like. It's going around, and it really does sound effing terrible. Uh, this is effed up right here. This scarlet lady says her symptoms started when she was a damn six-year-old. Ooh, boy. That's... She I... began to feel severe and constant pins and needles in her Jenna effentalia. Can't imagine how uncomfortable that would be. It sounds like a real keeper, Josh. 15 years of this now. Started when she was six. Now she's 21. She's only had a handful of pain free days. She's unable to work or go to school. Is this for realsies? Uh, she had one of her, she had some of her genital nerves pulled out to try and kill the pain. Oh, that can't be pleasurable. I doubt. I doubt it feels terribly good to have the nerves pulled out of your... Uh, Here are some comments from Scarlett. My vulva was constantly burning. She describes the pain as, quote, burning bugs under my skin. Feels like my gear is on fire. She smears vapor rub down there to distract from the unwanted arousal. The rawness and burning of vapor rub on her privates was more tolerable than the pain from PGAD. Wow. This poor girl. Growing up sucked for this gal. She was always anxious. She couldn't make friends. She was embarrassed. She couldn't sit still. She kept the secret from her folks. She finally dumped the news on him when she turned 18. Now, Josh, you got to tell me if I'm nuts or not. But what I believe I read here in the story, when she finally went to see a doctor, the doctor told her, well, first, you have PGAD, he said. You have uh, persistent genital arousal disorder. But then the doctor told her something that she was not prepared to hear. He told her she has a second vagina down there. Whoa. Yeah. Am I right about that? Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, I guess we've heard about that kind of thing before. And, you know, some people, like, probably for attention say, you know, I've got a boyfriend for each one, and they never share, that kind of stuff. So not only does she have this painful condition all damn day long for the last 15 years of her life, not only does she have this painful condition with her first vagina, there's also an evil twin second vagina down there, Summers. This gal needs an effing break. <laughs> Does this gal need a, a, a break in life? She yeah. does. Mm-hmm. Uh, they say the second vagina is not related to her PGAD problem. Doctors removed the evil twin vagina for her. They say it <laughs> fought like hell, but they got it out of there. It didn't want to go. If this was a horror movie, which it kind of sounds like... Um, they would have accidentally removed the good one. You know, you no. think you have a happy ending, and all of a sudden, at the very end, right before the credits roll, you realize, oh, my God, we left the evil vagina in Yes. This. You know, <laughs> setting us up for a sequel. The, and the evil vagina would have a British accent. Oh, mm-hmm. heck yeah. Just a smirk on its um, lips. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll be damned. Somebody help this effing gal. She hasn't had a damn good night's sleep since she was six. That's tough. I, you know, certainly you understand why, but I feel bad that she couldn't even, at such a young age, couldn't even tell her parents. You know, she was embarrassed to tell her parents what was going on. Ah, man. Man, oh, man. You thought your privates were a nightmare. I know, Josh, you think your privates are a nightmare. Oh, they are, yeah. yeah. You, don't, you don't like them at all. No. I've had doctors call me. They say, you're my private nightmare. You say that to my face. <laughs> All right, here's a hell of a deal, too. The human body. What a setup. And I think I've heard of this once before. Just once. By God. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead anyway. Some uh, sorry bastard living in Belgium. Man, there are some awful places where people choose to live. Uh, you know what? Our neighbors, uh, we have some new neighbors, and they had lived in Belgium for the last five, six years. Did they tell you that it was terrible? They loved it. No, they didn't. Yeah, they did. <laughs> Enough Nobody so that they moved it. back. They moved back to yeah, Belgium. They're, they're ba- no, back in Minnesota. No, they actually did love it. It was for a job change. How are their waffles? They, uh, are, they speak very highly of them. Oh, nice. And their chocolate. Mm. This guy's in Belgium. Anyways, a uh, dude was acquitted of drunk driving a day or so ago because he has something or another called auto brewery syndrome. Tell me if anyone, so I, I swear to God, we've read. Uh, yes, we, we talked, there's a, at the end of the story, it mentions another guy we've talked before. Oh, I, I maybe talked I, about I might have edited him, him out of here. But anyway, auto brewery syndrome. It's a rare, another rare condition where his body produces alcohol naturally. And that's the argument his lawyer made in court when he got pinched for the, uh, there's no info on how the dude got pinched for the DWI in the first place, but apparently he's off the hook because the alcohol swimming around inside the guy is always there, and it doesn't affect the way he operates a motor vehicle or anything else. Hmm. It says here people with this condition, their bodies produce the same type of alcohol as you might find in a drinky or a Steve Weiser, but that they generally feel less of the effects. It's like uh, you're, you're... your tolerance is is always there. Your, I think that's the best way I could put it. I've got the opposite of what he has. The complete opposite. Mm-hmm. One drink. Tolerance. <laughs> one beer. One, one, and I'm on your lap telling you how much I care about yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> you get silly after one. Yeah. My, my left side of my face starts to droop. It's a mm. whole thing. I'm a cheap drunk, Ashley. Oh, yeah. I'll take you out sometime. <laughs> it won't cost you much. <laughs> if, I mean, if you're buying, it's you like are half a, a white date. claw. <laughs> He's a cheap date, and take it from me, Ashley, you can get action. <laughs> <laughs> if you want it, he will be the most submissive lover you have ever encountered. Oh, yeah. I really want to show my appreciation for the evening. That's for oh, sure. Oh, my God. I was get, I had your fingers in my ear. Yep. You were kissing me on my neck. People are not born with alcohol... How did I say it again earlier? Don't don't tell me. I'll get there. People are not born with. I lost it. So now now I will ask, uh, ask for your help. Alcohol, auto brewery syndrome. That's it. Thank you. Uh, people are not born with auto brewery syndrome, but you catch it from other intestine related conditions. So this guy and others like him, they're just a walk in cocktail. 
And I don't. I, I edited out the other guy. What do you remember about so, the other guy? The other guy that had it dumb, he was fired from his job because his coworkers said he always smells like alcohol. So they thought he was drinking before work. Mm. So you know he fought that, but he's, he's never drank. He drank and drove, nothing like that. He never got in trouble for anything, but he just reeked like it. So, so it was, eventually his bosses said, hey, you're drinking before we work. We know you are. You always smell like alcohol. You're gone. That would be so frustrating. That was a Florida guy. I was here in the States. So do you went to court and got it all straightened out, or, or do you remember the end I, of the story? I don't remember if that happened or not, but I, I thought that that's why we read it is because there was some sort of lawsuit. So maybe he got some money or his job back. If I'm I just, remember correctly, I think his family even like thought he was an alcoholic. You're drunk. <laughs> as soon as he walks in the house, the wife's on his ass, you know? I, I, Where were you? I, I came straight from work, you know, that kind of a thing. <laughs> I'm sorry, did you mention, though, this guy in Belgium, where he works? Uh, at a brewery. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> I did not mention that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe I should have. So your guy, the guy you were talking about, he must have had like a heavier case yeah, I of wonder. this uh, I wa- auto brewery because it was coming through his pores. Yeah. So, so much so, yet his co-workers were complaining and the bosses realized it. So could his sweat technically get you drunk then? I doubt it. You should try and drink it and let us know. Okay. L- lick the guy down once <laughs> if you like. Isn't it, it's fascinating. You know, I'm a beer drinker. I come from a long line of drinkers. You know, this, this stuff is, is really interesting to me. Um, you know how some people, oh, you can smell it on them. You can smell them from Definitely. across the room. Mm-hmm. Definitely. It just comes pouring out of their bodies. But there are others where you really would have no idea the amount of booze that they have taken in on a particular day. It's a, you know, some folks the next morning it comes pouring out. And I don't, I've had that problem once or twice when I was really drinking heavy. You could smell it on me, couldn't you, Josh? Um, not very often, but sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah. It would get bad in the kitchen. Oh, I bet. Yeah, after mm-hmm. like a Friday night, Saturday morning would be bad. Sunday morning was bad. Too. Hot kitchen guys are sweating it out from the night before. Yep. Lots and then, of Jack Daniels. Yeah. And boy, that smells bad the next day. And then, you know, other aspects to drinkers that I find interesting. We were just, you know, talking about Josh. One beer, and you can see it on his face. There are some people where it, it mangles your appearance. It's your, weird. Your facial features droop or or swell up you know you turn red where others they wear it so well oh i get the rosy cheeks yeah. yeah my my mom she said when i was like younger and i you know wasn't supposed to be drinking she could always tell because my face would be bright red i have a, a lot of um people who have dependency issues in my family and that that's actually a reason why i haven't tried drugs or i don't drink very often is because I know myself well enough to know I have a lot of similarities, and if I start to like something like that, I'm going to have an issue. I, ju- I just know that that would be my thing. But So some of those people, I didn't know at all that they were drunk constantly because they could hold themselves so well. Right. And I have another younger family member who recently started drinking, and it was the same thing. I thought, well, you know, they only had one or two drinks. And then I find out, no, no, they're like up to six at this point. I'm like, <laughs> I can't tell at all. I had no clue. When I was really blasting down beers as a younger guy, you know, all night long, get a couple hours sleep, start up again. Um, I always, I, I like to believe that I can carry myself well when I'm drunk. Uh, I like to believe that it's not obvious. Um, but the next morning, uh, this is something physical. The next morning, my face would be very puffy. Oh, yeah, that happens I've to me, too. I've noticed that on you before. Very, yeah. My face would wear it the next morning where my face would be very puffy. And there's one picture that I, 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 I come across now and again. Big Al and I got ripped off our asses up at my old man's fishing <laughs> shack when we were like 25, 6. The next morning, we went out fishing. Didn't get a lot of sleep, and we did well. Uh, catching walleyes. So there's pictures of Al and I that morning pulling in these fat-ass walleyes. And there's a picture of me holding this keeper up. And my face, I look like a cartoon character. (laughs) I'm so puffed up and awful looking. It's just, it's hideous. Hideous. I've started putting a, like a a spoon in my icebox the the night before. And if you take that, like a frozen spoon to your face the next day, it helps a lot. 
brings mm. down the puffiness. Can uh. I just check the calendar real quick? Okay, it is 2024, because you said ice box instead of freezer. <laughs> <laughs> I get made fun of that all the time by my boyfriend, and it's just... Sorry, my parents are older. It's uh, a yeah. nice box. I, I've seen it on the uh, television show Little House on the Prairie. I don't know if I've ever heard anybody <laughs> say that. I mean, my grandma called the couch a Davenport. The uh, toilet was a stool. But I, I've never heard somebody say ice box. Outside. You go to Ashley's place. Uh, where's the molasses? <laughs> oh, I, I keep it in the ice box. <laughs> oh, where'd you get it? Uh, the mercantile. <laughs> <laughs> I traded a dozen eggs for it. All right, before we go, we got to get going again. Going again. Yeah, look at me over here fumbling papers everywhere. I could use everywhere. a drink. I could <laughs> use a drink. What about the folks who shake before they get their first drink? Mm. That's mm. scary. Yeah. Is that something to see or what? Not yeah, good. it is. We oh. once had a rock star come in for an interview to do one of those sound chat or, you know, play a couple acoustic songs, meet the fans. And he had the shake so bad, his manager had to put the beer up to his lips and pour it down his throat for him. No, they did not. Yeah. Are you sure he wasn't having a seizure? Well, did he have a guitar? Was he holding a baby? What do you mean the manager had to... Like, <laughs> he, he, he could not physically hold a beer and get it to his lips without spilling it all over. Oh, man. That's sad. Maybe it was just too cold to hold because he just pulled it from the ice box. <laughs> <laughs> too hot to handle, too cold to hold. Uh, yeah, there was a, a guy I went to high school with. I love the guy. I don't see him around anymore, but... Hilarious guy. Um, he was the first one that I ever noticed, you know, once we got into our 20s and really started drinking, how he would tremble before he had his first one. So we called him Shakes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, real quick, before we get out of here, here's a cute picture that I imagine we should have up there for folks to see on our website. We call it 93x.com. Ashley, tell me uh, if it's up there. The dude who was using a vice grips for a steering wheel. Uh, I don't think I got that one. Well, what the hell is going on around here? I can get it up there very fast, though. I used to be able to say that. Yeah, I was going to say, nobody wants it. <laughs> Some Canadian donkey out in the boonies, he got pulled over by the cops, and they saw that the effing guy was using a vice grips where his steering wheel used to be. Turn the wheel. Turn the steering wheel. Let me see the steering wheel turn. God, oh, what the... I've never seen no like that in my life. Uh... <laughs> It reminds me of one of my uncles. He always had crappy cars growing up, and he would do stuff like he had a, uh, a, a screwdriver for an accelerator, and he, he had a, a crescent wrench that he used as the steering wheel. And, and, did, and it worked? Yeah, it worked. <laughs> How about this Canadian guy? Was it working? When he was, did you see video? Yeah, yeah it was working. I saw, well, at least I saw the picture. I didn't watch the video. Uh, I saw the pictures of it, and they said it worked. That was audio of him showing another dude. I've seen vice grips and screwdrivers used for gear shifts, but not as a damn steering wheel. The driver also, by the way, when he got pulled over, he didn't have a license, uh, so he got himself a ticket. The Saskatchewan version of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, they sent out a tweet. That's where this happened, up there in Saskatchewan. Uh, they sent out a tweet to folks in that neighborhood to make sure their vehicles are well-maintained and safe to operate. Yeah, got to have that. Keep, keep the road safe. This hey. same uncle was so cheap, he uh, bought a new pickup truck and he used it mostly for work and he uh, kind of pissed off the sales guy he refused to pay for windows that weren't crank operated he did not want air conditioning and he also didn't want to pay for a car stereo so he ended up ordering one and the guy's like i don't know if we've ever done this before <laughs> like, you know they just kind of come this come way on, yeah. man. he is so cheap he's also kind of one of these guys and i know it, uh, it upsets a couple of my cousins but he's like how much do you pay for that why, why would you spend money on that? I could have got you. I could have got you that. How'd you get here? One of those, you know. You, you, mean, you wasted a bunch of gas. You could have went this way. He's got. Uh, he's got the answer for everything, especially financial. Uh, yeah, and stuff. he doesn't mean to be a dick about it. He's just genuinely wondering why would you pay for air? You got windows on that thing. Just roll the windows down by hand. Well, that <laughs> that, that I uh, yeah by hand. Um, that I'll agree with. Uh, I you guys know this. I almost never ever ever use the air conditioner. I almost never ever ever don't. Use yeah, the it's air always on. <laughs> I just roll the windows uh, down. Uh, one of my buddy's dads was one of those bare bones guys when it came to buying a car. Like that bare bones. No, manual everything, right? Because it was cheaper. And uh, it was kind of funny, if, you know, if, if it wasn't all laughs, because the guy died. He dies, no. and he's got this bare-bones pickup that then my buddy wanted to sell in my yard, because my yard, I used to live in a, a high-visibility area. Uh, so maybe you had to be there, but my buddy's dad dies, and he's got this 
no power windows, no power anything pickup. And my buddy says, just my luck. Uh, my dad has this, you know, bare bones, no luxury pickup. And then he ups and dies, and it's my job to try and sell it. Oh. You know? <laughs> and, people, of course, people are walking up saying, what do you mean no power windows, no power anything? You know, and I was like, now I got to sell the damn thing. That'd be an easy ad to write up, at least. You don't have to put much in it. Yeah. yeah. Here's the year. Here's the model. <laughs> It'll get you where you Mileage. need to go. <laughs> right. And some mile. We got to take a break. We'll uh, check on the sports when we come back. It's Wapple with your video game update. With the excitement around the Fallout TV show continuing, it's also impact. Fallout games. 2015's Game of the Year Fallout 4 is now hitting new heights with over 150,000 players playing at one time. That's a great place to be because the only other video game hitting those types of numbers right now is Helldivers 2. The Fallout TV show didn't just help Fallout 4. Fallout 76 had over 73,000 people playing at one time and Fallout New Vegas was running over 43,000. In more Helldivers 2 news, it looks like Xbox players might be able to join the fight against the bots and bugs spreading managed democracy. Helldivers 2 has been on the market for over two months, but you can only play it on PlayStation and Steam. Now the rumor mill is turning, saying they're bringing it to Xbox. Now hopefully with more Helldivers in the world, maybe it'll make those major orders easier to get XP. Stay tuned every Wednesday for more video game updates. Sports on the 93X half assed morning show. If Anthony Edwards started kissing you, would you stop him? No. No. If Anthony Edwards started kissing you, would you stop him? Absolutely not. If Anthony Edwards started kissing you, would you stop him? Depends on it was if there was tongue involved or not, but mostly not. Most well, if there was tongue involved. Uh, you know, I guess how deep it is, like, you know, if it's back of the throat or if it's just, you know, flicks. If it's flicks, I'm okay with it. What do we got there, Wolves fans? Yeah, you know, a lot of people are becoming big fans, like myself, bandwagon jumpers. Not not everybody, obviously, they've got a lot of fans. Mm-hmm. Uh, lately, it seems more and more. But um, I, I, Land of 10,000 Takes, I believe they're called. Yeah. Um, they uh, On their social media, the, uh, the guy was funny. He's walking around asking about, hey, what would you do if Anthony Edwards was kissing you? Would you allow it? And, of course, you know, everybody was all in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Ah, man, he's a popular dude here he in sure this town. Is. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, the Wolves are tough, man. They are. Even tougher than I would have given them credit for. Because that was a physical ball game last night. Speaking of Anthony Edwards, he wasn't at his best. But they still gutted out a win over the Phoenix Suns, 105-93. to They're up two games to none in the best of seven series. We'll get into detail on that here in about a half hour. I uh, will tell you what else happened in the silly NBA playoffs. We'll get to the hockey. The Twins, oh, my damn. Heck yeah. You know what I'm talking about? It was so cool. It was almost like the same time when the Wolves won, Buxton hit that homer to tie it up. Yeah, it was right around the same. Uh, I wonder if uh, it was pretty quiet in the ballpark before Buxton (laughs) hit that. I mean, there weren't weren't many people there. I I, I flipped it over to the Twins, and I turned the volume up because I just wanted to hear. I wanted to find out if I could hear Wolves fans raising hell in the background from the basketball game. You know what I mean? Like out (laughs) on the street screaming and yeah. And then Buxton hit, and then the, uh, what's his name with the beard? Uh, uh, Sheffers. Kirilov gets the game winning. We'll I, get I know, into that, I know too. you guys, oh, sorry, I was just yeah. going to ask quickly. I know you guys were, you know, keyed in on the Wolves, but I was following along on my phone, the Twins game, and it didn't look good at first. How how much were they down before they came back? I three runs. Was it three runs? Okay. They were down three runs. It was like three nothing at one point or something like that. Five, two, and then they yeah. had to come back. Randy Shaver, Brad Ryder, and a half hour. Josh's news is coming up, skis. Half assed morning show. They're loud. They lose control. They do their little circus act. They're a nuisance. 93X. Our experienced and certified technicians at Standard Heating have been trusted to keep our fellow Minnesotans comfortable and confident for over 90 years. We're ready to do the same for you, providing comfort you deserve since 1930. It is the triple savings spring sale at Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Install a new furnace and AC combo and save up to $3,000 with manufacturer and utility rebates along with Standard Heating's discount. That's a trifecta. Visit standardheating.com. You met Lala Kent on Vanderpump Rules. Now Lala and her friends share everything on Give Them Lala. I'm expecting my second child. Which is very, very amazing to say. Congratulations. We're that all way. with child. You can say she's pregnant, she's knocked up, anything except with child. Oh, I love with child. I'm going to be saying it all the time. Yep. Excuse yes, me. Yes, yes. Six feet, I'm with child. <laughs> 
Watch what Lala is talking about on YouTube or search for Give Them Lala wherever you listen. Half Assed Morning Show. 93X. She looks like she's to be in her 60s, possibly 70s, wearing a COVID mask, also uh, wearing eyeglasses. Police in Ohio arrested a suspect in connection to an armed bank robbery Friday afternoon. And while rare, the suspect is a woman, and perhaps even more rare, she's been able to eat for a discount at Denny's for their 55-plus menu for 19 years. The bank robbery happened around 1 p.m. when deputies responded and found the 74-year-old woman had oh. robbed a bank. Be on the lookout for a gray Hyundai sedan, front plate, white female, curly blonde hair, blue bag with a handgun, involved in a robbery at our group. With, with a handgun? With a handgun, the, yeah. The Golden Girls are uh, taking over. Yeah, they've, uh, they've gone dark, this new storyline. It's kind of like uh, the fresh print. If you watch the reboot, it, <laughs> it really took on a lot more dramatic turns than the original. Did you watch any of that, Josh? I watched the first episode and thought, this is not quite what I expected. Mm. A little heavy. Uh, 74-year-old Ann Myers was taken into custody. She, Dete- she even sounds old. Yes, yeah, <laughs> just by the name. <laughs> mm-hmm. Detectives said evidence that the crime was found inside her vehicle, including that handgun. Police said the septuagenarian swindler had no criminal history. What do you suppose got into her? Uh, yeah, I wonder. If, if Maybe she has had a criminal history, just never got busted, or she maybe it was on her bucket list. <laughs> maybe it's dementia. I don't know. That 55-plus menu at Denny's, I can't wait. <laughs> I, I can't wait. I'm, I'm six years away. Here we come. It's pretty uh, pretty cheap. Yeah, yeah. Good stuff. Moon's over my hammy. Yeah, I'll take that at a discount for right. sure. More information was revealed yesterday about a Minnesota state senator, member of the Air National Guard and former broadcast meteorologist who was arrested for breaking into a Detroit Lakes home before sunrise Monday. The first-term senator told police she broke into her stepmom's house about 4.45 a.m., because she said her stepmother refused to give her items of sentimental value from her late father, including his ashes. The arresting officer wrote in the complaint he heard the uh, 49-year-old Woodbury woman tell her stepmom something to the effect of, I was just trying to get a couple of my dad's things because he wouldn't talk to me anymore. She was dressed in all black and wearing a black hat, the complaint said. The officer said he discovered a flashlight near her that was covered with a black sock apparently modified to control the amount of light coming from it. I know I did something bad, she allegedly said, after being told her right to remain silent. Her father had died, sadly, last month and had been married to her stepmother for about 40 years. She told the officer she was after pictures of flannel shirt and other items, but it was specifically the ashes that got her, quote, to this stage, the complaint read. The senator acknowledged she'd entered the house through a basement window, which had been propped open with a black backpack. Officers found her Minnesota Senate ID inside it, along with her driver's license, two laptop computers, a cell phone, and Tupperware containers. She indicated she got caught soon after entering, to which she reportedly said, clearly, I'm not very good at this. <laughs> well, family drama yeah. uh, gone out of control is the way she's selling it. Yeah, it does change things. Would you guys ever think to put a sock over a flashlight to help control the light yes. going out of it? Yes. I, I used to be a uh, wobble. Really? I used to be a bit of a derelict criminal. Boy, I would uh, never small, think Small time criminal. Out of curiosity, Wapo, what do you use your socks for when they're not on your feet? <laughs> oh, boy, yeah, we can't get into that. <laughs> they're can... crusty. Oh, you. It's funny put... how he thought he needed to explain further. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes subtlety is just fine. <laughs> the joke was working just fine, Wapo. If convicted of first-degree burglary, the senator uh, will fa- or could face excuse me, 180 days in jail or a county workhouse and up to 20 years in prison. She says, ah, by damn, I'm not very good at this. Yeah, she had a sense of humor. Oh, sad, sad situation. Yeah, it sucks. I could see the passion there if, uh, you know, her dad just passed. She wants the ashes. It sounded like she wanted leftovers, too. With the uh, Tupperware? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe there was some lasagna. That's tough to turn down. <laughs> a Florida man named Larry Carter Jr. said someone stole his 2023 limited edition Dodger, uh, Dodge Charger SRT Hellcat Red Eye Jailbreak from his driveway. What the hell is that? It's a sweet vehicle. My God. But the, you, you go on forever just uh, describing the vehicle. You I don't know think what I mean? it was that. 
Well, it wasn't that long. It was just a 2023 limited edition Dodge Charger SRT <laughs> Hellcat Red Eye Jailbreak Edition. <laughs> And he, I bet you this guy made sure he included every possible detail. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, heck yeah, I would. I'd so put it you. on my driver's license if I could. <laughs> so uh, what happened here? Uh, the thief didn't just get away with Carter's supercharged 6.2-liter high-output Hemi V8. He also made off with his mother's ashes. It was special, you know. It's last call. Got my mother's name. Got Jesus on both sides, said Carter. It was meant for her. That's the main reason I got that car, because of her, to represent her, he said. Carter said he didn't take the car out very often, but when he did, his mother came with him because he kept some of her ashes in the cup holder. Oh, he did. There's also a sign on the back windshield that said, In loving memory of Lorena Leonard, Carter's late mother, who passed in March of 2019. But in a surprising twist to the story, Carter called police back on Tuesday to let them know he found his mother's ashes. They were left in his mailbox, meaning... The crook may have had a heart. They got some good heart. They still got a good heart, but just they, they mind messed up. Well, Carter is, huh? their mind is messed their up. They got a good heart, though, that okay. they left the ashes. That is reassuring that maybe they're not a total dirtbag. Mm-hmm. While Carter's still holding out hope he'll get his custom car back, he's relieved to be reunited with his mother's ashes, which he said, of course, is way more important. To oh, him. I was going to ask if the, the criminal gave him a choice. You can have the ashes back or the car back, but not both. What to, would you have gone with? To the news, he said, the ashes. Yeah, yeah, but if you really thought about it and didn't have to tell anybody which one he actually took. Well, that's like, I don't know, a, a car guy could tell me. I think you're looking at like a $100,000 vehicle right Jeez. there. Whoa. Or just a, right around there. This is something that uh, you would be proud to drive around town, Cubby? Oh, heck yeah. You, I wouldn't want it that customized on the outside as his was, but yeah, I'd love to have a car like that. Uh, on the topic of Hellcats... Good luck to Mopar Dad Jesus, a.k.a. Lake Street Taco Jesus. He's shopping for one today. He's hoping to find one. Oh, that's exciting. I'm going to need a ride in that bad boy. A drone pilot made a mysterious discovery last week while flying over a Twin Cities pond. The Dakota County Sheriff's Office said the pilot spotted a vehicle submerged in the water at Burnsville's Neal Park, which had led to a slew of theories online as to how it ended up there. Oh, I love online theories. (laughs) Well, there's a a bunch of them. (laughs) They're always accurate. The county's dive team removed the 1983 BMW 320i, which was believed to have been underwater for 20-plus years. What? A sheriff's office Facebook post led to more than 125 comments, with many people speculating the car had been dumped because it was stolen or could have had ties to an unsolved crime. However, yesterday, the sheriff said the backstory is not nearly as interesting as the speculation. People thought there was something fishy, but there was not, he said. Adding the process, they processed the car and found nothing suspicious. They were able to reach the last known owner of the car through sheer luck. It didn't have license plates, and the vehicle identification number didn't come back to anyone. But surprisingly, a bill of sale from 1986 was found in the glove box and somehow managed to stay dry, so they found their name. A detective tracked down the person on the paperwork, uh, work, a guy who's now 80 years old and lives in Plymouth, told the detective he believes the car was sold or traded and doesn't recall for sure because it had been so many years. The pond's lower water level aided in the pilot's discovery. So, uh, did I miss something? So, how the hell did it end up in the water? Yeah, they don't know yet. Okay, they don't know that part yet. Yeah, they're not 100% sure. But they said the reason it was, you know, it just was the algae, or maybe that's the wrong word, but whatever the growth in there usually is a lot worse than it is right now, and then the water levels were low. Uh, we're running out of time, so we've got to make some selections here. Eh, we'll you'll, take the, you'll take the Hellcat, it sounds like. Yeah, I'd love <laughs> uh, Okay, got to ditch What that happened? One. Is it tough for you to make these uh, decisions? Yeah, because we do have some good stuff. Some of them are easier than others to get rid of. I kind of like people on the show. Oh, my God. <laughs> I didn't mean that. that wow, was just like Josh. A, that was a last-second joke. I didn't mean it. That was an easy joke. That I was like a, it. It was a stupid joke. Hey, you know what it is? It's a freaking wake-up call is what it is. I feel bad about that, myself included. You can throw me right in there. For some of you, that's a wake-up call. A car crashed into a Rhode Island Duncan yesterday morning, but it was the lighthearted reaction of a 15-year-old at the scene that has the Internet talking. Crews responded to the Duncan location in Cranston about 6.30 a.m. and found the car entirely in the coffee shop. Police said the driver had his learner's permit and was learning how to drive, but obviously it didn't go too well. When he put the car in drive, instead of reverse, the passenger told him, you better hit the brake 
However, he reportedly hit the gas Mm -hmm. and went through the front window and into the counter. A 15-year-old whose mother was working inside the shop at the time had a memorable quote about being glad she wasn't injured. I'm happy she didn't get hit. That would have not been good. I think they said it was like a car malfunction. America doesn't just run on Duncan. Cars do too. I don't know if you could hear it. Our headphones sound a little different than what you're hearing. But he said America doesn't just run on Duncan. Cars do too, which of course is a parody of Dunkin's well-known slogan. Dunkin' Donuts. America runs on Dunkin'. Thankfully, no injuries were reported in yesterday's incident. (laughs) So cute. (laughs) Yeah, it was pretty funny. So he's the latest latest, uh, viral sensation? He seems to be, yeah. A Georgia man decided not to press charges against a woman who stabbed him in his buttocks with a fork. Deputies responded to the man's home late Sunday for a domestic dispute where he and his on and off again girlfriend got into an argument, leading to her grabbing a fork and stabbing him in the butt. Deputies spoke with the woman who said during the argument she only poked his butt with the fork. Since the man didn't want to press charges for getting his butt forked, police advised him to obtain a temporary protection order. I guess if I get stabbed, the, the butt's a pretty good spot. If, yeah, I think if I had to pick a spot. You know, not not the middle, just off to one of the sides. <laughs> yeah, not the middle. <laughs> I was at a restaurant once, uh, very drunk, uh, late at night um, with other drunk people, and I watched a man get stabbed in the forearm by a fork uh, because he was teasing uh, his girlfriend uh, with a massive rubber fist. <laughs> How bad was the stabbing? It stuck in his skin. Oh. I mean, it, it, it stood straight up out of his arm. No way. Like out of a, a movie. Man. Yeah. Uh, he had gone to a sex shop and bought a life-size massive rubber fist, um, and he told his girlfriend that he was going to be introducing this into their sex life. <laughs> um, she argued the fact, and uh, eventually she got so frustrated with his teasing that she stabbed him with a fork. How, how'd that relationship go after that? Haven't seen him in years. I haven't seen him in years. You know, we, we talk about this, and I think it's a good theory. The bedroom, I bet, is very passionate and uh, very enviable, probably, for other people. Yeah, they seem like they're having a good time. I, mean, I, I even, would think so. Even after the dude, even when the fork was sticking out of his skin, uh, they still remained a, a playful couple. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Goals. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the 12th season finale of American Horror Story airs tonight on FX. Right now, if you text the word plant, P-L-A-N-T, to the Luther Bloomington Kia text line, 651-989-9393, you're entered to win free grass, up to 2,000 square feet of sod, plus delivery and installation from A&L Sod. Good luck. Willie Castro of the Minnesota Twins turns 27 today. And a big old birthday shout-out to Cheyenne, whose fiancé said it's her last birthday before she's trapped with him the rest of their lives. <laughs> and that's 93X News. Care 11's Randy Shaver. He's a pay-per-view turd. On the half-assed morning show. Time expires. Minnesota takes a 2-0 series advantage. Oh, the Wolves are going to win it in four. Wolves in four! Anthony, MVP, Andre. Nothing like Wolves I've ever back. seen before. They kept playing. They kept playing hard. The Wolves definitely in four. Building's been amazing. Fans have been unreal. I mean, our guys have risen to their kind of energy. We're locked in from the start. Randy Shaver and Brad Ryder, welcome to the show, boys. Good morning. Good morning. Or maybe Brad. I should call you by the name that you're now famous for on the internet. Girth Master. Yeah. Good yeah. morning. Wow. Girth yeah. Master. Good morning, wow. Girth Master. Why is that? I just look it up. You'll have a good time with it. <laughs> okay, I can barely hear you guys. I don't know what it, what it is. Yeah, it's the corn cobs in your ears. You mm-hmm. grew up in Clara City. That's what yeah. it is. Uh, he's got you got to husk those things. We've got problems oh. up and down, Brad Ryder. We don't know what the hell's going on around here. I hear okay. you loud and clear. Just uh, put your face right up against the phone. Make it so we can hear every breath that you take. I have the volume turned all the way up on my phone. So. I would like that, wouldn't you, Josh? If somehow, some way, we could hear every inhale and exhale that Brad Ryder makes. Yeah, I want to hear like the fibers of his bronchi or whatever that's called. <laughs> Bronchial tubes. Yeah, I just want to feel them moving back and forth. Mm. Yeah, sorry, Brad Ryder, but everything's sideways around here since we okay. moved into the. Yeah, it's a hell of a deal. So there you go, 
Randy Shaver and Brad Ryder. I'll tell you, here's what I told uh, everyone else on the program a little bit earlier. Randy Shaver, Brad Ryder. I said the Wolves are even tougher than I thought they were capable of after watching last night's game because that was a physical ball game and they gutted it out. Even without Anthony Edwards at their best, they got the win in game two over Phoenix. They won it by, I don't know, 10, 12 points. That they, they showed that they're tougher than I even would give them credit for, and I'm a massive jock sniffer uh, for this ball club. I, I don't disagree. I, I think what we saw last night, to be quite honest, is a team that can win the NBA title. Mm. That's what I saw last night. Mm-hmm. I, I saw a team that easily could have gone the other direction, could have split the series, split the uh, first two games, right. and gone back to Phoenix, um, but played, I would argue, even tougher defense last night, more physical last night. Um, than even in game one. And smarter than they played in game one. And that, I, I wasn't sure I would see that, but I think... I think this team has that potential, certainly to win this series, Mm -hmm. but even more than that, that this maturity that we've been talking about for I don't know how long, honestly, but I think it's not just here. It is is part of their fabric now. And you you cannot leave that building last night and not be totally impressed with what you're seeing. Um, they've got a great chance to win this series. Now, it's a long way to go, and Phoenix is a veteran team, but they didn't play like that last night. They, they're they sloppy. They were sloppy on offense. They turned the ball over way too much. Mm-hmm. They took some bad shots. And I think part of that really is how the Wolves played them. You know? Yeah. Oh, you yeah. Can, you can say that Phoenix... It's easy for me to say Phoenix was sloppy, but I think they're sloppy because the Wolves play so damn aggressive that I think you absolutely should say that. Yeah. Yeah. It causes them to to make the mistakes that they make. What so, do you think, Brad Ryder? Um, I I agree with most of that, but I'm gonna reserve I think the talk of them winning the NBA championship until I see them on the road a few games first. But they, I do think that they have what it takes now after watching the first two games to absolutely win the series win. And in fact, I wasn't alone and Randy wasn't alone. There were a lot of people that thought this was a bad matchup. Well, I mean, they're proving that to be a little bit wrong in the way that they've played the first two games. I'd, again, I'd like to see not only this series, um, hopefully, you know, you got a 2-0 lead, you can wrap this up at some point, but how they're going to react when they go to Denver or when they go to, you know what I mean, some of these other right, places, if, if they can transfer that over to this. Now, if they can play this way, it's not so much about, oh, we need to win game three to win the series, but I want to see how they play in front of somebody else's home crowd. Um, That's and fair. If, and, and, and if they do this there, then you can start to think, okay, well, maybe this team does have something that can propel them beyond this series and another series, um, you know, into May and, and I, June. But I, I want to see how they play. Now, again, not to take anything away. They, they've done everything probably exceedingly well in ways that we didn't think that they could in these two games, which they have, you know, all the credit in the world for. But I want to see what happens when they get in front of somebody else's crowd. If you look at all the series right now in the NBA, yes. and you look at all the teams that have that have been playing so far, they are the most dominant team against an opponent so far in in the, the two games that have been played. They, I mean, even more so than uh, who's Boston playing right now? Yeah, yeah Boston. Yeah, Boston uh, you can argue I'll, Boston sleepwalking a little bit because yeah, they know I don't they're think, better. But. Well, Boston had that big lead the other night, and they just kind of fell asleep and let yeah. it. Uh, but but I, just the way that they're playing, just how gritty and aggressive and. Their defense you know, is absolutely who, who, ferocious. Who in, the, who in the hell saw this team turn into a defensive juggernaut? I, I did not see that last year. They did not play like they are, like they did during the regular season and right now. I mean, that to me is the is the greatest transformation of this club that, that I have that I have seen. That that it, was the amazing. whole point in um, that was the whole point in trading for Rudy Gobert. Right. I mean yeah. that that was. That was why they did that a couple of years ago, and last year didn't work out, whether it was an adjustment period or injuries or whatever it was. 
But that was why they traded for him, because he's been the defensive player of the year, what, two, three years in a row now? And so that's why they basically mortgaged the future and said, we're going all in to, to try to improve our defense. And luckily, you have a younger player in Anthony Edwards who's bought into being a force on that side of the ball, too. And it kind of forces people like, you know, Carl, who, you know, historically maybe wasn't a great defensive player, but now... He doesn't have to be an elite defensive player when he, he's surrounded by a couple right. of people who are. Just give and, the effort. You know, Jaden McDaniels. Is yeah, a, just make an effort and player. play your position. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, just be average on defense, well, and, and, and we'll be fine. And it's more than Gobert. I, to me, it's and maybe Gobert is the reason, uh, big reason why. The, he's probably the biggest well, piece he, of that he can, puzzle. He can, certain, clean up, he can clean up a but, lot of messes in the lane. Yes. Yeah, but, but, Brad, it's an attitude change. Yeah, no, that, I'll that's, agree. That, that's what I'm getting at. But it's, he's brought it, that attitude. Well, he has, but something it has to be more than just him, right? I mean, I give Finch and that coaching staff a ton of credit. But I think what has happened is these players, it's kind of like you wake up one morning and you go, gosh, you know what? Defense actually does help you win <laughs> basketball. Well, you know what and, I mean? And, and, and when just, your best player, I mean, that's been the whole thing the last 10, 12 years since they've been trying to build something from the ground up with young players is getting the young players to buy into that guys they've had here in the past. I mean, Wiggins, you know, he can count to other people and Wiggins is a decent defensive player, but he's not on the level of Edwards, obviously. But when you can get, you know, Anthony Edwards to buy in and play defense like he does. And then Jaden McDaniels, I mean, good grief. I mean, oh he, he's an elite, he's an elite defender. Friggin' too. outstanding. So you what have a game he you, had last you have, night. You have three guys, Gobert, McDaniels, and Edwards, who when they're on the floor together, they're just going to smother people. That's why I say Carl doesn't have, he can just be average. He doesn't have to, in the past, everybody was on Carl about his defense. Well, now he, he you know, he can be the fourth or fifth best defensive player. I, I understand what Randy's saying is yeah. to have team defense become the strength of your team, it, it's, it's about, a, a, you got to be mentally tough, you have yeah. to be committed, you yeah. have to be willing to exhaust yourself on that end of the court, and every swing and D on that club is in on that mindset. Yep. Um, yeah, when your best player does stuff, I mean, I'm just saying, well, I'm repeating myself, when your best player buys in, everybody else has to, too. Yeah, but you know what? You, I, I agree with all the things you just said. KG was that guy in 2004, mm-hmm. and they played pretty good defense, but not like this. Th- th- not like this. This. Th- this, what we're seeing from this team is a complete and utter buy-in from every single player that they are going to play their butts off on the defensive end and create the turnovers and the opportunities and the fast breaks and, you know, hit some big shots, certainly. But it starts and ends with how they play there. And that that kind of has happened, I'm not going to say overnight, but it, it – it really, from the end of last year, we, we, we sat here and said, God, if this team could just figure this out, get mature, play better defense. You know, we, we said all those things thinking, well, it's still going to be an evolutional process. I Really, from the get-go, to the start of this season, for the most part, they've been like this, but they have ramped it up. They've amped it up big 100%. time. 100%. Now, here's what I noticed last night, and I'm sure a lot of Wolves fans noticed last night, which gives me hope in this series that they can win it. Um, it's a long ways to go. But what what I saw last night was, and I didn't, I didn't really know this coming into it, how much deeper the Timberwolves are than the Phoenix Suns. With Booker and Durant and Beal, they can be great, but they're not as deep as the Wolves. The Wolves bench is far superior to Phoenixes, and now they lost what's his nuts from Duke, uh, Graybeard uh, McBean, what the Grayson hell is it? Allen. Grayson Allen. Yeah. He, so I mean, don't doesn't that 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 gives me hope? They are so much a deeper club than Phoenix, and I think you saw last night the Wolves just smooth wore them out, and the crowds chant Wolves in four. But, At any rate, uh, but, game but three I, is uh, tom- uh, Friday night sure. in Arizona. But but I would argue, Nick, that they wore them out not necessarily with their bench players. They wore them out with their starting five. Mm-hmm. Their starting five, even with Carl in foul trouble and didn't play in the second quarter, certainly Nas Reed and, and Nikhil Alexander picked up the pace. Uh, 
for them. But I would argue that the starting players for the Wolves are the and, and sometimes it, it can be your bench players who give you that spark and play the better defense or whatever it might be. I would argue, though, that the, the Wolves starters last night were the ones that actually wore out Beal and Booker and Durant. I'll go along uh, with and, it. And forced them to, to shoot a poor percentage and – Eastbound at Sundown Jesus sent in an interesting text. He said, you can't sustain defense like this for 82 games. They had this in their back pocket. And that's what it appears to mm -hmm. be. It appears to be. And, of course, everyone picks up their intensity and their effort in the playoffs. But this is significant. It it is. And like Brad said, we'll see how this now plays out when we go to Phoenix to play in front of a a different crowd. To me, I you know, if I'm the Timberwolves right now, I am super motivated to get this series done, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. get a chance to rest, let Denver, because Denver's probably going to plow through their series. So you don't want Denver to be able to sit at home for three days or four days and catch their breath before you have to take on that Goliath. And, and, I'm, and I'm not saying if they lay an egg on Friday, is it Friday they play? Yep. 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 If they lay an egg on Friday, people should panic. They should not because – what I've seen, I don't know that Phoenix can beat them here. And if, you know, obviously they have home court advantage, so I, I'm feeling pretty good that they're going to advance no matter what happens when they go to right. Phoenix. But, you know, when we start talking about going to the NBA Finals and stuff like that, I mean, I want to, you know, I, I want to see some performances like that on the road before I'm completely bought in. That well, they're no one's bought in that they're going to. Randy just said, we saw a team that looks like yeah. they could actually accomplish something like I, that. Yeah, yeah. Yep. That, that's, that's what I meant. I, do I think they can win the title? I, sure. I think anything is possible. Looking at how they played last night, is it realistic? Probably not. But I, I'm telling you, it's if you can sustain the way they played last night and get the production you did for McDaniel's, who played out of his mind. Yeah, let's give him credit again. He I, was an he, animal. He was. He was just fantastic. I love him you know, shoving Booker KD, around. We got Jake yeah. McDaniel's. Yeah. There's uh, I, I, Anthony Edwards from a couple years ago saying they might have KD, they've, they've, but we've got. They've got a shot. I to, loved. To, yeah, to I really loved him getting in Booker's here. face and shoving that some yeah. bitch across. <laughs> that, <laughs> that was, was awesome. a lot of fun. Uh, it, it, one more. Uh, one more. Uh, something or another here. This is tough. This is tough for me to answer. Um, I lost the texter's name who sent this in, but they uh, they said uh, along the lines of they weren't around the last time. The Wolves, you know, had this kind of excitement in town. What was that, 2004 when they went to the yes. uh, Western Cup? Yep. Co- yep, yep. This individual says, I, 2003, four, whatever it was. Yeah. Yep. He wasn't around was during nice. those days. What was, what was it like in town, I think is what he means. What was, what was it like back then compared to now? I think oh, the, the boys got to play a few more games, I think, before. Yeah, I, I think that's yeah. fair, too. That's yeah. why we got yeah. to see a little bit more to see what the ex- excitement level is. But I'll yeah. tell you what is comparable, the crowd. Uh, what yeah. I remember yeah. about 2003-04 yes. when KG and Sprewell and, and Sam Cassell, uh, well, we, we talked about Sam, Sam yesterday, didn't we? <laughs> we did. <laughs> it was um, fun. The crowd was so amped, and the crowd last night uh, was wild. That it's, it's, uh, it's so much fun to watch. Well, the unfortunate thing about that year, too, if – if uh, Cassell doesn't get hurt in the in the playoff during the playoffs, I, I do think they will get to the finals that year, yeah. and that's another mm-hmm. thing we got to stay healthy throughout the playoffs too. All know? right, Brad Ryder and Randy Shaver, answer this question for yeah. us: uh, If Anthony Edwards started kissing you, would you stop him? No. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that honesty. If Anthony Edwards started kissing you, would you stop him? No. No. If Anthony Edwards started kissing you, would you stop him? Absolutely not. If Anthony Edwards started kissing you, would you stop him? Depends on it was if there was tongue involved or not, but mostly not. Most well, not. if there was tongue involved. Uh, you know, I guess how deep it is, like, you know, if it's back of the throat or if it's just, you know, flicks. If it's flicks, I'm okay with it. <laughs> somebody, that guy. somebody really went around. Down. <laughs> well, was he just walking around Minneapolis, or what was the deal? Yeah, oh, yeah. A young guy from uh, on social media, land of ten thousand takes, was w- walking around asking. <laughs> most fans. everyone, uh, most everyone said that they would not stop Anthony Edwards if he started kissing them. Uh, Rudy Gobert, great game last night. Uh, yesterday, we were talking about how, uh, according to his peers, other NBA players. Um, He's the most overrated player in the NBA. They don't like Rudy. You know, we covered that yesterday. Nobody likes Rudy. 
Um, so I, I, oh, go ahead. Uh, I got a, we got a quote here from Rudy. Someone asked him about that, about how he was voted the most overrated player in the NBA. Uh, a couple of the quotes I liked here where Rudy said, I'm the weird French guy. Uh, and he also said, I just think I'm mostly misunderstood. I trigger a lot of these guys, he said. That's funny. That's certainly what he this. does. I, and, and, and speaking of Rudy, what happened to the – he's become a free-throw shooter. I, oh, I know. Honest to God, mm-hmm. the, the last two playoff games he's been near perfect. He's become Michael Williams out there. He doesn't exactly. miss a free-throw. <laughs> did he miss – did he miss he two? Missed one last night. Yeah, but two in the two games here at home, yeah. I think. That's insane. Amazing. Yeah. That's so insane. I saw a stat online last night, and this is a little bit of a you, – you guys like trivia, obviously, so I'm going to throw this one at you. See, maybe, maybe if you saw the same stat I did. Since 1992, okay, do the math, how long sure. ago is that? I, I don't yeah. do that kind of math, but 30, I'll do my 30 best. 31 ago. 31, okay. Minnesota's baseball, basketball, and hockey franchises have combined for 43 playoff series. They've only been up 2-0 to zero in just four of those. 43 playoff series. Do you know the other three? Hell no. Well, since I mean, I'll 92. take a guess. Uh, since 90, no, since 92, I, I, there's no way I could answer those questions. Okay. And Randy? Um, I, I, but but I, think about just the stat before you even, I mean, how, seriously, in what? the last 32 years, we've right. only had th- four times where we've been up 2-0 in a playoff series. I wouldn't be able town. to. Yeah, no idea. That's why people are so excited. Yeah, we're pumped. We're just starved. Absolutely. Well, but even more than just being up to zero, it's how you're up to yeah. zero. Mm-hmm. I mean, to, to me, that really is. I mean, even when the Twins were in the World Series in 87 and 91, right? Um, and they were up to zero and everybody got super excited. And then they're down 3-2. I mean, to me, and they, you know, they were such a home team during those two years that they won the World Series. How this team played last night and just the grit and the grind and the the focus and the energy is is just it, it's amazing to watch because we have never seen that type of intensity from uh, from this club mm-hmm. in all the years even during when KG played yeah they were great they were so fantastic played great but to me Far superior to that uh, to club. To me, this is uh, yeah, and maybe I'm not remembering all of those games well enough to to compare them, and I'm and I'm just kind of focused on what I saw last night. And it's the liquor talking, run. Randy. That's what it is. <laughs> but but it's impressive. It really is. It's impressive. I saw a write up on this too. I'm fairly sure we already knew this, didn't we? Already know this. Rudy Gobert went through a darkness retreat he a did. year ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we knew that. <laughs> right? He called Aaron Rodgers and asked for advice yeah. on it. Yeah. Right. Similar to what uh, that moron Karen Rodgers did. Yeah, we knew that Rudy did a darkness yep. retreat. He oh. called Karen and said, uh, "What what what yeah. should I expect from?" Uh, with the smooth turds and all that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think it. I think Jim Peterson was saying he believes it really made a difference. It helped them out going through that darkness retreat. The cops in Denver are looking for the fan that got punched in the skull by one of Nikola Jokic's brothers at the Nuggets Lakers game a night or two ago. That guy can take a punch, by the way. His mm-hmm. brother, as you can imagine, is they're big. big. They're big oh, they're dudes. Bo- they're mm-hmm. huge. You know, yeah. the Jokic's brothers. What's their problem? I mean, they, they do this. This is not the first time. What's their problem? Yeah, you know, is it because they're not Nicola, so they have a what's what's that term, Josh? A uh, inferiority. 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 They, I mean, I, I think you know. It sounds like they're just very, very protective. Uh, if somebody says anything very or acts sensitive a, of their brother, yeah. Well, for God's sake, the guy's seven foot tall. He's the size of a house. Okay? And he's a professional athlete. Professional athlete. should yeah. expect some of that. See, I mean, okay. I mean, it's not the biggest he, deal in the world. He threw a punch. He punched a guy in the head. Uh, one of Jokic's brothers, although both of them were there. They're jaw jacking with fans in the crowd. But here's where I go with this. And, and I don't know. Maybe I'm overthinking it or whatever. But. Any of the rest of us takes a swing and punches someone in the head in an NBA game, we're probably not going to be welcomed back. Nope. No, no. no. And yeah. I think one of the articles I read mentioned that. Like, it'll be very interesting to see what happens because, yeah, a normal fan would be banned. They'll That's be courtside. It. Yep. They'll be friggin' courtside. We should quietly celebrate this, though, because they were doing it to Laker fans. So. Oh, <laughs> sure. <laughs> Fair enough. Wait, do you I agree? See what you mean. That guy didn't look very big, and it could have been perspective because he's a couple rows down. But he took a punch like a champ. Yeah, he was. I uh, thought he was going to be dead. He didn't budge. No, 
He didn't budge. The NBA is investigating. The cops are looking into it. Uh, you know, whatever. Jokic's brothers act like a couple of bags is what I think. But, you know. And maybe I missed something. Get over yourself. The guy that can take a punch, he didn't get physical unless I missed it. I didn't. It just, whatever it was that he said must have pissed him off. On enough. the video that I watched, the dude who got punched, he didn't swing back. No. That's what I saw. Yeah, and I didn't see him pushing or anything ahead of time. But, you know, oh, I'm sure that, yeah, they'll be going out to dinner with the owner and they'll be courtside for the next game. <laughs> F that crap. <laughs> uh, Nuggets fans uh, in this series, uh, this was kind of cute. Uh, so after game two, um, the, the, the Denver Nuggets post-game guys are sitting in a booth, you know, kind of elevated above the uh, crowd. There's not much of a crowd left, really, after the game was over, and they're doing their post-game show, and a couple of drunk kids, uh, Nuggets fans, climbed up basically into the announcer's booth, and I, I don't know... <laughs> It was just like a 2005 New York Yankees game. They decided to chant, who's your daddy? At one point in the first half, then led by 15, the Lakers cut it to six. But... Oh, so that's the crowd yeah, that chanting. that one was the crowd. What, what's with the who's your daddy thing? Uh, I... Oh, shoot. Remember I the Yankees it, fans I it, had... Yeah. Got it. Or Pedro. I... Pedro Martinez, the mm-hmm. who's your... Uh, I don't know the... the or, or, Origin, or origin, origin of, of the yeah. who's your dad. But then you had, the, I don't know if you have the audio of the drunk kids climbing into the announcer's booth. I but. did, and I, I, I apologize. We're a little hamstrung over here, so I don't know what happened. Yeah, it happens. Some of this stuff doesn't transfer over. That brings me back to the old, uh, the old Met Center uh, in 1991, and I know what you're saying, again, with the 91. But in 1991, when the North Stars were playing in the Campbell Conference Finals with the Edmonton Oilers, against the Edmonton Oilers, Uh, At Met Center, Uh, we had great seats throughout that entire playoff run. Uh, And on purpose, we picked the last row of seats up against the opposing team's press box. So right above us, if we looked straight up, you would see all the injured players from the opposite club that weren't playing and the media from the visiting club. And we were loving giving them a hard time. There were guys from the Edmonton Oilers who I don't know how they didn't climb down and kill us the way <laughs> we were talking to them. We were just smart mouth, drunk, 19-year-old kids. But there was one, Randy Shaver, I don't know if you remember this, there was a reporter in Edmonton who wrote this scathing article during that series about how we Minnesotans, we don't really know hockey. Yes. Um, we're soft. That. Right. Yes. And if they printed it here in the local papers and all the hockey yes, fans. They did. State of hockey types wet their pants. So we're at the game one night, 91, Campbell Conference, at the game against the Oilers, and we're sitting there, and someone taps us on the shoulder and says, you know, the, the guy sitting directly behind you, that's that writer from Edmonton who wrote the article about how we, we Minnesotans are soft. My, my buddy, and you know, these days, this would have been on every sports website you could find, and he would have gone to jail. He... Gets out of his chair, climbs up. It wasn't that far of a climb. Climbs up into the press box with this Edmonton writer, sits on a chair next to him, and tears into the guy for writing the article. That's (laughs) awesome. (laughs) And what I was also surprised, no security did a damn thing. Not a damn thing. What also was crazy was the, the writer did not push him, did not scream. The writer sat and listened to my drunken 19-year-old friend give his take on why Minnesota isn't as bad as... It was just, you'd never see it again in a thousand years. Never again. There's my drunken buddy, and two seats down from him is Yari Curry, or, you know, an injured player. There's the backup goalie who was... It was just... It, we, we talk all the time about how Met Center was a completely I, different uh, you know scene. If I remember the press area... Uh, of the Met Center, it was like a catwalk. It was very tight uh, to get from one point to the other. Tight quarters. Yes, and um, so that's probably one reason why he wasn't stopped by anybody because nobody could get to him. Well, also uh, the security was basically was lax. They're probably yeah. on the other end of the press yes. box, so they couldn't right. see him come well, up. Well, it wasn't really a press box. It was more like a like I think I'm describing it pretty well. It was like a one long row. It's like a catwalk. I remember one long row. 
The security um, back then were like 89-year-old retired yeah. guys who right. also worked at Valley Fair in the summer. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. Same thing in the Metrodome back in the day. It wasn't anything. Uh, right, I, think, I think I might be able to get this to work. The uh, fans taking over the post game. Oh, yeah. So, also, so you would get a stop, and then maybe it would be another missed shot by the Nuggets down on the other daddy? side. Who's it's tough to overcome daddy? that sometimes. And the Nuggets oh, were able to, get, able to get that done. And so... That's what's up. We got this, okay? Okay. I didn't say it. Hey, man, what are you going to do? What are you going to do when you Where's beat security? The... Security! Oh when you God. beat the team 10 straight times, you can say whatever the heck you want uh, yeah. at this point. <laughs> it's 10 straight, all right? Also, drunk 19-year-olds, I think, right there. Yeah. <laughs> and you've heard me tell the story before, but this 19-year-old buddy of mine who crawled up into the press booth and, and had an argument with a 61-year-old sports writer, um, this was the same dude who went into the North Stars locker room after a game and no one said, Dick. Walked right into the locker That's room. That's a little bit more difficult to do, but yeah. Drinking beer with Brian Bellows and, and uh, <laughs> Neil Broughton and Mike Madano, and no one said a damn thing. That's awesome. All right, what else is going on? The Twins pulled one smooth out their ass last night at Target Field. Put the White Sox one more loss closer to the 62 Mets. <laughs> wow, that's, that a ba- was... that's such a bad baseball team. Oh, my God. They're now yeah. one of only, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Only four or five teams in the history of baseball have started a season three and 20. The White Sox and they are actually got a great performance from Fetty last well, night. Yeah. He actually pitched really, really well against the Twins, but their bullpen was just garbage. And the Twins took uh, advantage. It was nice to see the Twins' bats come alive when they needed them last night. Buxton had a great night, and yeah, uh, Trevor did. Larnick uh, came through with a couple of huge hits last night. So. Down 5-2 in the eighth. Larnick yeah. got the dong out. So did Byron Buxton in the ninth to tie it. And then later in that same half inning, Alex Kirilov got the uh, – Two out, walk off, single. Yep. Twins win six five. Yeah, Pablo was not at his best. The White Sox probably thought, "Man, this is tailor made for us." Yeah, they thought they were going to win, and probably rightly so. But, and they uh, friggin' blew and, it. And the Twins did all that despite striking out fourteen times last night. Right. So it was just, you know, I mean, this, yeah, this the gonna, Twins. This is going to be a regular occurrence. Isn't it, it is, and I. It and already is. The Twins, uh, you know, they're, they're going to struggle a little bit here to just to be a five hundred team at this point. Uh, hey, right now on the Luther Bloomington Kia text line, text STRIKE to 651-989-9393 for a shot to win tickets to the Twins White Sox tomorrow at Target Field. Thank you to the Minnesota Twins who furnished that prize. They got a night game again tonight, then yep. a day game tomorrow. Uh, tonight, uh, Joe Ryan's going to throw. NHL, uh, Zach got the game winner for Colorado last night. They beat Winnipeg by three goals. Awesome. Yeah, good for Zachy. New York Rangers beat Washington. Florida beat Tampa Bay in overtime. Nashville beat Vancouver. Okay. Now, this might be the dumbest 10 or so minutes in the history of this radio station. And Josh, right now, Josh is saying to himself. Wow. That's quite I was going to say it. Yeah, yeah. That's real funny. There's, there's been some dumb minutes on this radio station. Mm-hmm. Well, and credit to you and Brad for a lot of that. that. Well, of course. We contribute to that regularly. This might be the dumbest 10 or so minutes in the history of this radio show. And right now, draft? Josh is asking himself, what are we going to do, play Password again? <laughs> we're we're going to talk about your uh, plans for the draft coming oh, up. Oh, yeah. yes. yes. Uh, password. That was so good. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I'd get you with that one. None of you have any idea what we're talking about. a stage yeah. at a rock show. Yeah. Oh, boy. What are we going to play, Password? No. <laughs> Uh, this might be dumb, and it goes everything against what I was raised to believe in, but I'm going to go ahead anyway. Let's quiz Randy Shaver and Brad Ryder, a quiz on a non-dad fights day. They never saw it coming. Facts about the NFL draft. <laughs> are, you, are you ready? I, I'm, sure. I'm just you know what? Between uh, actual golf talk and this, I, I am shocked. That you're even taking part. Well, in this. he hasn't really gotten to golf talk yet. We still force that on him. But. Right. You know, uh, I, I sacrifice at times <laughs> yeah. for the greater good. The, the greater, greater good. good. There's just a few here. Okay. Have we extended the draft to one full week yet, or are we just on three no, days? No, we're still? three days. Okay. Doesn't it start tomorrow? Yeah. They're going to do. A, they're going to yes. do a pick a day for 700 days. Oh, yeah. Brad. <laughs> when was? You. 
When was the first NFL draft? Oh, God, I don't know. Oh, man. 1958. I'm going to say 1938. Brad Ryder's very close, 1936. Wow. It uh, was called the Annual Player Selection Meeting. Okay. Teams chose from a uh, pool of 90 players without much information other than local newspapers and uh, word of mouth. Uh, Who was the NFL's first draft pick? I'll give you a hint. The last name, and I'm going to need a guess out of both of you. Uh, the last name uh, kind of sounds penisy. <laughs> okay? The last name has a penile vibe to it. So go ahead, Randy Shaver. What's your guess with, no with that information at the ready? No I'm going to need a guess. Jake Wanger. I don't know. <laughs> That's very, Ber- very Ber- close. Burwanger. It's That's, Burwanger. There you go. Burwang. Oh, okay. Well, I was close. Jay Burwanger. Jay Burwanger. I said Jake, yes. but I was still close. Oh, we heard, I heard what you yeah. said. Oh, I thought 1936. Yeah. Unfortunately, Jay Burwanger. Jay Burwanger never played a down in the NFL. He became a foam rubber salesman instead. <laughs> <laughs> that was probably a more lucrative career back then. Oh, yeah. Oh, hell yes, sure it was. Sure yeah, it was. Definitely. I bet yeah. by far. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'll say it again. I mean, and this is, well, we're talking 1936. Uh, a, a guy I grew up with, his dad was drafted into the National Football League, I'm going to say 1960 or something like that. His dad was drafted to play offensive line in the National Football League, and he said, no thanks, I make more money teaching. Yeah. Wow. And he went on to a teaching career. Uh, when was the first televised draft? Give me a year. When did ESPN start? Um, 79, Brad, 80. Brad's doing very yeah, well. Yeah, it. Brad's doing well. 1980. Yeah. When, and it was ESPN. Yeah, ESPN. When they fired that nightmare up, they put the draft on uh, television. Uh, how many rounds are currently in the NFL draft? Seven. I- I'll give you close enough for that, Randy Shaver. Um, nowadays, it's – how does this work again? Did I write this down correctly? It's seven, it, it's seven yeah. It's seven. Yes, you're right. I'm just sorry. You don't, <laughs> it, it used to be like, it used to be like 17. Yes, it started with 32 rounds. Yeah, it used to be a lot of players. Yeah. Well, first off, the guy, he doesn't want to talk about it, and then when I get of, a little when yeah. I get a little squirrely, he gets all mad yeah. at me. A lot of those people they drafted probably didn't want to go in. That's why they had to have so many rounds. I'm How guessing. much time do each teams get between picks? Two minutes in the first round. Five minutes in the first round. <laughs> two minutes after. That. You're just gonna keep hitting all different. <laughs> no, parts. five minutes in the first round. No, I think it's ten in the first round. Because they do Is commercials all the time. Brad yeah. again. Oh, yeah, they stretch right. that first yeah. round out. Ten minutes yeah. in the first round, seven in the oh, second, God, five no in the third, the first six, round six four, so two. <laughs> Which city has hosted the most stupid NFL draft? New York. That's right. Yeah. And this is the one that you won't have any guess on this, I don't think. Maybe you will. Well, I won't even form it as a question. Is this for real? Uh, when did uh, 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 Kyler Murrah, when did he get drafted? Five, six years ago? Something like that. Okay, yeah. fair enough. Doesn't matter. We don't need to be specific. It says here, the year that Kyler Murrah was drafted first overall, more than 600,000 people were at the draft? Yeah, they had it outside. I think in like yeah. Kansas City or something oh, like that. It was a big, huge, oh, wide-open field. Oh, I see. I was Which wondering. is what they do now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, that, that's what threw me. I, every, you know, I will punch it over and see two seconds of the draft. I mean, know. It looks like they're just in a half-filled hockey arena. What are you talking about? 600? They've turned the draft into this three-day celebration where they can make money. and It's just crazy what they've so done to it. I think they have the actual draft inside somewhere, and then they have that big party where everybody's watching on giant big screens outside. All right. Total Nightmare starts tomorrow night. If you watch it, we can of, never be friends. A lot of mock, <laughs> lot of mock drafts have the uh, Vikings uh, taking a quarterback and tra- tra- trading up, likely mm-hmm. – Pick number five with the Chargers okay. and taking J.J. McCarthy. We'll that talk about that. to be the conversation. Okay, J.J. McCarthy. Here's the deal. Um, from Michigan. Correct. Uh, he went ahead and said that playing for the Vikings would be a dream come true. Does this kid have a drug problem mm-hmm. or something? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, he's, it, Kevin O'Connell certainly does have a reputation for uh, being uh, a very good quarterback's coach, so. McCarthy said he would run through a brick wall for Kevin O'Connor. <laughs> That's a little dramatic. <laughs> yeah. Prove it. Caleb Williams. This is the guy that everyone expects yep, to go number one overall? Yep. That's the quarterback. 
Okay, from the Bears. Uh, where, where do you go to school? USC. Chicago Bears hold that first pick. Yep. Uh, his stock, as they say, has been put into question leading up to the draft, and here's why. Uh, according to some old-timer scouts and whatnot, this is the conversation that they're having. Um, they're wondering if this kid is football ready. Uh, it says here he paints his nails. He has cr- he has cried on the field, and they say he just doesn't seem tough, masculine, whatever enough for at least for some of the old school scouts. These are the conversations they're having. Um, here's another quote: "The book on Caleb Williams that he is that he's just sort of a weird kid." One GM said, "It's like if Prince played quarterback." What did the scout tell you that you can report? I hated it. He would scare the sh- out of me if I was working for a team. Raw emotion is great, but Caleb's thing? That was ridiculous to me. That threw up major red flags. You just lost a game in the middle of your f- season, and it was like your third loss in the Pac-12, and you went hugging on mommy and crying in mommy's arms, and it just seems really freaking weak and nuts. And I will tell you, he scares the sh- out of a lot of NFL teams, too. The book on him is he's just kind of a weird kid. One GM told me it's like if Prince played quarterback. Look, I don't know him from Adam. I do not know him. But to me, that looked weak as sh- there you go. The crying is weird. That that's alarming. I, yeah, it's it's hard to debate that. I mean, well, look at it this way: Prince might have been a different kind of a guy, but we all saw the late Charlie Murphy story and what a terrific athlete Prince was on yeah, a basketball court. An incredible <laughs> basketball player mm-hmm. for a guy that short. If I remember the video, he dunked the basketball. He let go of the rim with one hand, and then he let go of the rim with the other hand, and he still just levitated there. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. I don't know any athlete that could ever do that. And you remember what he did afterwards? He made, made pancakes. everybody pancakes. Right. <laughs> so this is the first I've I've learned of this Caleb Williams. He's a, a little bit of a different kind of a guy. Well, the only team that matters is the Bears. And if the Bears look at him and they've already made all the arrangements for him to be the first pick. They traded away their quarterback, their young quarterback. They have set this thing up for him to be their guy. Obviously, they look at all of this and they're not worried about it at all. They feel like he's their future. So all it takes is one team, and they have the first pick. So Here's a text from March Madness Jesus who says, too weird. Caleb Williams is too weird. Have they seen Cam Newton's wardrobe? <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I love his hats. I do, too. I like everything about Cam Newton. I don't like Cam we, we know that, Randy. <laughs> <We know. laughs> Paints his nails, huh? I've considered that doing that to my feet. Trying to hide some stuff. That would look cute. Just that would cover. be an improvement, probably. Oh, well, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I've, I've thought about, I've considered painting my toenails just to cover up the yellow. <laughs> <laughs> my, boy, I mean? my boyfriend let me paint his toenails once, and I, I fell in love with it. You liked it? Yeah. I, I, it like, I don't know, it added something to him. A little bonding if, experience? It was cute. I don't know if I should go black or white. I don't know what to do about paint. I mean, I thought with the black and then with the yellowing feet, I'd look like a Steelers fan. I don't know. Or an <laughs> Iowa fan. <laughs> well, why don't you go with Timberwolves colors? Yeah. You could you try go. that right yeah. now. <laughs> I could try something. It's something. Cause why it, don't you do that and then take a picture of the TV on the Wolves on the broadcast in the background and just your feet up on the on the ottoman. <laughs> just take that picture just for relax. Oh, yeah, it. You know, you, with, with your toenails. Painted. just feel like that, it would you make you caption, vomit. You could caption it. Carl Anthony Toes. Ah, <laughs> that's cute. <laughs> that is. There you go. Ah, uh, what else is going on? The you effing... know someone out there listening is going to steal that idea and put that out. Carl there. Anthony oh, Toes. <laughs> man, because I got some ugly feet. The MILF man, Zach Wilson, got traded, but unfortunately not to the Vikings. He's going to try and play some football in Colorado. <laughs> the best comment I saw was a guy on Twitter. That all he said was, Oh, my God, my mom lives in Denver. (laughs) (laughs) Gotcha, mom. Well, you have a new stepdad is what that means. We've got good tickets to games coming up anyway. That's great. (laughs) Calls. He's going to be calling his mother every night. Where are you? (laughs) Who are you with? Turn your location on. Who are you with? (laughs) What do you mean you're going to Sunday's game? How'd you get free tickets to every game? You're in his suite? (laughs) Mom? (laughs) 
Mom? Uh, speaking of the Denver Broncos, uh, it says here their new uniforms are so bad, it's the only thing that social media dorks can currently agree on. <laughs> the new uniforms for the Denver Broncos are just that bad. I took a look at them. They, they're, they're pretty bad. But I don't like any of the new uniforms. Anyone else seen the new Denver Broncos no. uniforms? I yeah, I, uh, I agree. I, I thought it might have been a little clickbait, clickbait but they're not that great. It kind of looks like the JV Boise State uh, oh, <laughs> you, you see where I'm going Those with that? Designs, yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure I'm not going to break anybody's heart around here, but uh, I was reading yesterday that uh, Patrick Mahomes has refused to host Saturday Night Live. Good. Uh, right. <laughs> right. We don't need any more of him or whatever no. the other guy's name is. Yep. Um, but it's kind of a unique reason why he won't host Saturday Night Live. He has a fear. And if Randy had this same problem... Uh, Randy, you would never would have made it out of Cedar Rapids. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's his name again? Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes. He has a fear of reading off a teleprompter. How would you what? have a fear of that? Apparently, and I don't remember this because I haven't watched the ESPYs since 1990, whenever Jim Valvano died was the last time I watched the ESPYs. But apparently Mahomes had some bad episode on the ESPYs where the teleprompter effed him up and this oh. went, this went well, wrong. Well, sure. I the- mean, if you don't know the material and the teleprompter stops working or takes off on you, you're kind of screwed. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. But wait a minute. Do you control that yourself, Brandy, the speed I of it? I do not. No, you don't? We, have, we have somebody that runs. It. Oh, that's scary. I would not be able to keep up. Or I would read way too fast. I always mess with my buddies like, in high school. You're only going to read as fast as the, the, as the words are in front of you. So, I mean, if you, if you operate it yourself and you go too fast, that's one thing. Have but, you ever said anything about San Diego? <laughs> <laughs> you can't put it on there. Randy will uh, read it. Said something about a whale. <laughs> <laughs> You're a dirty pirate What were hooker. you saying about high school there, uh, Dana? We had a high school TV show, and if one of my buddies was anchoring that day, and I was running a teleprompter right after with him a little bit. You guys had a tele... Oh, I suppose you graduated way after I did. Yeah, and it was a brand new school, too, when I first started going there in like the early 2000s, so we had state-of-the-art everything. We were pretty lucky, pretty spoiled. All right, Nick, it wouldn't be Carl Anthony Toes. You what, what are we your doing? Toes what are we doing? took a picture... I failed at life, Jesus said. Let's be honest. It would be more like Anthony Edward Wart. So I screwed up. No. <laughs> Anthony Edward. Dude. <laughs> you know someone's going to take that picture on Friday. That's awesome. I could give it a shot. I mean, I you could. You should. Uh, no, really, you should. You should go to a nail salon and they could put oh, a little. Oh, I'm not <laughs> going to a nail salon. They Just would, have they your would... wife do your nails. Oh, uh, now we got to talk about my freaking wife. <laughs> mm-hmm. yes. They could put a design on what it, though. That's cute. That would be. If you, you had have... your Feet up watching the Wolves game with your toenails painted Wolves colors. That's yeah, you, awesome. You might really like it. You know, add some whimsy to your day. I think a lot of dads are checking in. I've had the same thing. If you got a daughter, they love to, you know, dress you up. I was so glad when we had a, son, a younger son because then he could take that from me. Oh, but yeah, you'd have a spot. I don't day. have a daughter, but I do have a woman in my life that calls me daddy. Oh, <laughs> um, oh I would never go to a nail salon, Ashley. They would call the police <laughs> as soon as I removed my shoes. Uh, we're going to need a $1,000 down payment, sir, to even get started. Now, Foshe Maintenance Ninja says Rudy go barefoot. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. There's so many opportunities. Yeah. I'm trying to come up with a name on the Wolves roster where fungus can be worked in somewhere, but it's not. I'd have to look it up. Uh, yeah, my feet are gross. Uh, so don't expect to see Patrick Mahomes on Saturday. Even though they don't use teleprompters. They, they use, use cue uh, cards. Cue cards. Cue yes. cards. But Randy Shaver, okay, when you're sitting there at the news desk, and, uh, uh, boy, you can – I watch Randy's news. You can tell he has – he's mailing it in big time. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. You have no – and no, no, we, I understand. I wouldn't – you're on your way out. Who cares? Um, you've got the teleprompter. Don't you Don't you print out what you're talking about? Absolutely, I print it out. So you have a backup plan. I have mm-hmm. the scripts on my desk. Yes. If you ever have any questions about improvisational skills josh and i will will field those questions you're asking for me yeah i have questions oh yeah. i don't have any questions <laughs> addison says nick yes Jaden mctonails uh, <laughs> what's left of them it's gross all right boys we got to go okay but thank you randy thank you tomorrow's Brad. draft day can't wait Woo. i know you guys are fired up we'll talk all about it tomorrow 
half-assed morning show. They're loud. They lose control. They do their little circus act. They're a nuisance. 93X. Our experienced and certified technicians at Standard Heating have been trusted to keep our fellow Minnesotans comfortable and confident for over 90 years. We're ready to do the same for you, providing comfort you deserve since 1930. It is the triple savings spring sale at Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Install a new furnace and AC combo and save up to $3,000 with manufacturer and utility rebates along with Standard Heating's discount. That's a trifecta. Visit standardheating.com. Named one of the best personal finance podcasts, The Stacking Benjamin Show with Joe and his friends makes financial literacy fun. Work hard and save your money. That way, when you're old like me, you can buy the things that only young people can enjoy. The squirrel watching. You heard it here first. Get yourself a squirrel cam. Spend $30 a month on nuts, and you'll be at early retirement before you know it. No, Piggy, this is the road to a podcast nobody listens to. <laughs> Find out more by searching The Stacking Benjamins podcast wherever you listen. The 93X Half-Assed Morning Show. They can get pretty big. They can get 10 foot, 150 plus pounds, and they are a predator. On 93X. All right, by God, uh, here we go. We're cruising now. Before you know it, I'll be completely unconscious uh, at home. It's uh, 9, no, 834. Welcome back to the 93X Half-Assed Morning Show. So Janelle was here yesterday. We were uh, talking with Janelle a little bit yesterday. We were busting her chops about prom. We got into a conversation about prom. Uh, we never got around to this. Adult prom. Who's in? I've got no couple. Uh, I'll probably pass. Yeah, um, I think I'll pass. But uh, I know uh, yesterday we had our all-staff meeting, and they were talking about our sister station, Love 105, has a adult prom. I wonder... They've been doing it for years, from yeah. what I understand. Uh, I forgot that they had that. I wonder how fun that is. Or... Dana, please say it was radio station obligations that caused you to go to a couple of adult props. No, the arcade, but my favorite arcade, Up Down. They do one every year. It's really fun, actually. So you've gone a few times. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They so, got one coming solo, up I'd imagine. Yes, always by myself. Yeah. Usually crying. <laughs> <laughs> really, honestly, you went by yourself to pick up Squish? <laughs> uh, a couple times, yeah. When I was after I was divorced and single, I go hang out there. Any luck? Yeah. <laughs> You, that wasn't very convincing. Uh, but I, I'll ask you this. Your, mm-hmm. The suit you wore, was it your uh, Pac-Man suit? Of course. If you have a Pac-Man suit, wearing it to an adult prom at a classic <sighs> arcade is the way to go. It does yeah, make sense. True. Mm-hmm. If you're going to wear it anywhere in public, that would be the place to wear it. Adult prom. I would love to go because I like any excuse to buy a really nice dress. You like to dress up, do you? Yeah, it's fun. I'm going to go the other way. I'm not going to go because I have to do that. <laughs> yeah, I don't like dressing up either. I don't like that. So it is prom season, and more and more adults, it says here in front of me, are going to uh, adult proms. Well, I imagine, kind of like regular prom, it, it probably turns into a sex farm. <laughs> adult, you- adult proms. Okay, what do you mean, like, regular prom? So yeah. You didn't have that same experience? <laughs> I'm the only one that didn't have that experience. Oh, God. <laughs> no, it did, that didn't turn into anything farm. Well, what, uh, <laughs> Mine how, too. What were you doing wrong? I, I, I don't know. I went with more. Well, the first year I went was with a simply a friend. How, that was could it. She, how could she have resisted is my first question. I know. Oh. I couldn't figure that out either. <laughs> mm-hmm. And the second time, it was a friend with possible benefits, but it never worked out. And the benefits never came no, through? No, there were no benefits. <laughs> I don't know about... I, I would feel pretty silly as a grown person going to adult prom. Um, I could see my wife wanting to do that. She loves to dance. She's a, a big fan. <laughs> Why do you dunks? say it as if you're from uh, uh, from a Welsh background? <laughs> what, do you mean? Uh, what do you mean? Say it again. Your wife likes to dance. Yes, she plays dance, dance revolution. <laughs> <laughs> Craig Rosen's beard. I can't turn you down, pal. He wants to know if I'd go to an adult prom with him. Heck yeah, I'll be your wingman. I'd love to go to prom with I you. I mean, I guess it's all the way it's it's for me personally. Considering going to an adult prom, it would all be a matter of how it was presented. If it's going to be, yay, we all dress up in our fanciest clothes and slow dance and love songs and a, a, a fancy schmancy dinner, no. 
But if it's presented as some kind of a hillbilly acid rock, you know, type of a thing, mm-hmm. you know, where, I don't know, Kicks or Britney Fox plays live, or that, that could be something I could find myself getting involved in all the way all in the way it's presented well what about uh, if your wife wanted to go to one let's say there was a high school reunion and it was a we're bringing back prom for this reunion see i love high school reunions i love it so uh, yes you do that yes if it was all my old high school friends even folks who weren't my friends absolutely if it was formed as a high school reunion i love that stuff do you think Merzo would wear his dumb and dumber uh, tux dude <laughs> <laughs> he looks so good in that well he looks good in anything he does um that that's a great twist on it that i would jump on i don't know what i'm a sucker and my friggin' wife she busts my chops about this all the time uh because i just love to visit with people from the old days Love running into old high school friends, so I would be, I would, I would even volunteer to uh, organize such oh, a wow. thing. Uh, it, that's probably above my pay grade, but at least I would volunteer. <laughs> so she's not as into it as you are, kind of catching up with people from high school and stuff. Ah, uh, no, she enjoys it not nearly as much as I do. Though. I know she had a run-in with someone in a parking lot once that was a little unpleasant that you went to school with. If, if I'm thinking of the right oh, story. Oh, that was that wasn't my friggin' wife. Oh, it wasn't. That was a different close gal friend okay. of mine. Okay, all right. But I thought I, it was her. I can tell that story when you in were a just minute. Just friends. Uh, see, here's the thing. When my friggin' wife. You know, she and I went to high school together. My friggin' wife and I. Uh, she was a couple years younger than I, than I was. Uh, I am. She. Here's the thing. I love those events. She likes them. I don't think she loves them, but she certainly enjoys seeing old friends. The difference being, Josh, that when uh, my friggin' wife was in high school, she was very unpopular. <laughs> That's not true. There's no way. <laughs> Where I was uh, kind of the, uh, the man. I can't picture her being unpopular. She was very unpopular. I'm not buying it. And chubby. I'm not buying <laughs> that either. Whatever. Maybe she was, but I doubt it. Wapple. Yes. Uh, people are reminding us, didn't one of you, didn't your prom date get pregnant that <laughs> night or something like that? Oh, and, yes, she did. Now, oh. I forget. Uh, remind me, did you get her pregnant? Oh, no, I did not. So, no. I'm, if I could do the math, you took a woman, or maybe it was even two to prom, and uh, one of the two that your dates got pregnant from a, a different gentleman. I actually had three. Oh, I didn't know. Okay, tell Dang, us this dude. story. Yeah, okay. so... Uh, I brought my date with to prom, and then I brought two other girls who were a couple, too. All so right. they were a couple, and then I brought my date, and then we went sure. to prom together. It was a double date. Yeah. Oh, so that's different than bringing three no, girls to prom. No, 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 no. I brought three girls to prom, dude. <laughs> I'm an idiot. You're right. Okay. And, okay, and which one of them ended up getting pregnant that night, but not by you? It was my date. Your date. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, after the prom, we went to a party. She went with her boyfriend, who was much older at the time. Crazy. So, wait a minute. She As soon as prom was over, she's no longer with you. She meets up with her Cur- you you went to prom with a girl who had a boyfriend. Yeah, and she got the boyfriend like maybe a week after I asked her to prom. Oh, but she still went with you, which yep. is nice. But then yeah. she I would have honored- preferred her just to say, "Yeah, we're not going together anymore." Yeah, that probably would have been better. <laughs> but so you you were under the illusion that maybe you could turn this prom date into a relationship. Uh, in the beginning, until she had the boyfriend. How much older are we talking? Oh, boy. Maybe four years? Three okay. years? Okay. Yeah, you can't compete with that. Okay. That no. Age. no. Oh, God, no. I see how it played out now. So you knew when taking her to prom, ah, for F's sake, she's got a boyfriend. She just got this boyfriend. Yep. Kind of put a damper on that. You went anyway mm-hmm. because maybe <laughs> you'll have a good time and maybe somehow, some way, she'll end up being drawn to you. You go to the party, she bangs the guy at the party, she turns up uh, prego. Yeah. How, how did you... That's pretty awesome, dude. Did yeah, you... that's a story, isn't it? That's an awesome <laughs> yeah. story. Yeah, not not for you probably, but for <laughs> us it's kind of fun. Oh, yeah. So did you know she was with that guy that night, or did you just find out later when she uh, showed you the, the plus and minus on the stick? No, I knew they were together because we went to a party... And then he drove to the party, picked her up, and they left. Oh, okay. Ah. <laughs> Did she at least say, hey, I'm out of here? Or was it uh, the old Irish goodbye? I can't remember that. Ah, uh, yes. A lot of pain. Well, you dodged would, a it, bullet, Wapple. It sounds like she was really fertile. So. 
Yeah. <laughs> it was tough to see her leave through the tears. Uh, yeah, I understand. <laughs> Were you really kind of busted up about it? Because we, we, know, we know how easily you fall in love as an adult. I can only imagine how quick it was when you were a kid. I, yeah, I, I would assume so. So you probably. were kind of busted up about it. Yeah. Oh, Did that you, would suck. I you can't know, imagine. Yeah, because yeah, you know, you're, you're like uh, trying to plan everything, ask her to prom, get up those nerves, and then you finally ask her. She says yes. You're shocked by that. And then, yeah, a couple weeks later, you find out she has a boyfriend and ooh. Yeah, that's that's bogus. Waffle, she did you dirty. <laughs> yeah, blue Waffle. balls too. Blue. I mean, did you did you feel when the blue balls set in? Did you feel the moment when they set in? Uh, probably the next day after I sobered up. Oh sure. So I mean, did you bring condoms or or, or binaca? Uh, or no, oh. I didn't. Nothing. No, I knew nothing was happening because okay. of. Said boyfriend. boyfriend. Were well, yeah. there any other girls at the party that were there without dates? Did you at least try to like make a Hail Mary run at the end of things? No, they Hell all had no. dates. Look at who you're talking about. <laughs> oh, Waffle, that makes it even worse. Yeah. You were just there like you were like, probably like 10th wheeling or something like that. No, oh. it was me and me and my buddy. I had my buddy come with oh, me. That's so good. that made it a little He had better. his buddy with him, Josh. Yeah, his buddies can help. Yeah. Uh, what two, up, Sean? A 218 has <laughs> checked in and said they have an adult prom it's a fundraiser for the kids prom well that's awful nice mm, yeah, i'm not paying idea. for the kids prom <laughs> uh, and uh by the way one of your uh co high school cohorts has texted the program nick and yes. says that is not true about your wife everyone loved her in high school she was but she was kind of chubby no they they were uh they don't mind that that's okay <laughs> t-h-i-c-c i'm only teasing yeah she was a very popular gal she still is um, quite easy to get along with. Um, you know, one time in the history of this show, we had a prom proposal live on the radio, didn't we, Josh? Yeah, we did. Those uh, have become big. Cute. No way. They've what become, has become big? big? Promposals, like doing like an elaborate asking somebody to go to prom with you. Oh, that, those are always huge. been yeah. a thing. That everybody made a thing out of it. And now when I was in high school, it was pretty just, you just asked the girl if you wanted, she wanted to go with you. Oh, oh really? That was a thing. Dude, I, I got donuts. <laughs> what? Had, yeah, it had prom written on some donuts. It was yeah, awesome. It was big when we were a kid and when my kids were in high school, same thing. Oh, You'd really? make the whole production out of it. Mm -hmm. I, like, I like seeing those pizzas and it has the pepperoni that says prom. Yeah. I like that. Okay, I know nothing about this. I have to admit that I'm a little aggravated that prom posal was said out loud on this frequency. Um, <laughs> but I'll try to. So, um... All these have stories of some elaborate uh, undertaking for your prom proposal. Yeah. Yep. Okay. It's always been a... So I want to say word up to uh, my old buddy, Corey. And this is pretty cool, too, because uh, I've known Corey since he was a tiny little kid. I was good friends with his family growing up. Uh, I don't know what the hell, how the hell old Corey would be now, but he's in his 30s somewhere. He proposed, he asked if he could propose to a girl on our radio show, and he did. And she said yes, and the, and the bastards uh, even got married a number of years ago. Ah, oh, that's sweet. That is awesome. Started right here on this radio station, Josh. Now, somebody has texted in, and they're claiming, Wapple, you are not being completely forthright about your date, how it went huh? on prom. That's how you remember. Yeah. Well, well, get back to us and let us know what the differences are between his story and yours. So not only do we have someone texting in that knows my and my friggin' wife's high school background, but they know, there's someone else who knows Wapple's background yeah. and knows the real truth. And my The real truth is I was the chubby one in high school, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I was the chubby one. And I got pregnant. <laughs> and Wapple got pregnant. Yeah, he did. My proctologist is also text with some information about me that I do not want to reveal. <laughs> <laughs> we got to take a break. Maybe we'll find out this uh, dark inside uh, industry info on Wapple's uh, Forest Lake prom from, what was it, right? Forest Lake? Yeah. From how many years ago? Jeez, I'm terrible. Uh, the real dirt is coming up next on the program. Can't wait. Well, polish up your dog, schlong, because you're about to score. <laughs> if your job is scoring, you'll never work a day in your life. The 93X Half-Assed Morning Show. We're about to tap dance smooth out of this nightmare here shortly on the Half-Assed Morning Show, but we're continuing a conversation we started yesterday on prom. We added an, a twist. Um, adult prom. 
we didn't get that far yesterday. We didn't get far enough to start talking about adult prom. We, we, we've gone back and forth on what we think about that. Uh, we've all traded a couple of prom stories. Wapples uh, was a total nightmare. Uh, he goes to prom with a young lady. Uh, he has high hopes, even though she has a boyfriend. He has high hopes that maybe they'd end up together. Uh, they go to a party after prom. She ends up meeting up with that boyfriend, and she gets pregnant. Correct, Wapple? Mm-hmm. Now, we had some people text in and say, ah, 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 he's not telling the whole truth, but so far we haven't gotten any uh, more information, have we? We did. We did? Uh, yeah, somebody said, hey, Wapple, that's not how it went. So she gets pregnant on your prom night, not by you, from another guy. Uh, he, somebody texted in and said, here's how the story is different. Wapple, you are the father. Oh, <laughs> no. Now, that would be an unexpected twist, That it? would be. That'd be hilarious. That oh, you owe a fun. lot in child support yeah, by yeah. now. The back payment's going to get you. Yeah. I bet, we could, I bet I could pick that kid out of a crowd. <laughs> <laughs> he could almost drive by now. <laughs> so if you, uh, when you first found out about adult prom, or it was called adult prom, yes. were you as disappointed when you found out the real meaning of an adult coloring book? Do you, I remember seeing your face that day when you assumed, <laughs> like I did too, actually, when somebody says adult coloring book, it's pornography, and you're yes. going to be shading in veins and things like that. Dude. But no, it's just a coloring book made for adults. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a difficult coloring yeah. book. It's just a bigger coloring book. And more ah. frustrating. Adult coloring books, that's fun. Now, um, got a couple of prom horror stories here that have been texted in by a listener or two. Um, but back to adult prom real quick. Um, you mentioned earlier, did you mention this, Josh, that uh, one of our sister stations here, Love 105, yeah, they've been doing an adult prom for years. Yeah, and as a matter of fact, um, our uh, digital content manager, Christina, texts the show because we won't give her our personal numbers. <laughs> <laughs> and she said that they're, if you're interested, tickets go on sale Monday to that adult prom. Okay. Th- that sounds fun. Okay. But I think they keep it pretty traditional. Um, like I was saying earlier, I... I I think I would be interested if it was kind of a, you give it a heavy metal uh, beer drinker's twist, I think I'd be more drawn to an adult. Or as you brought up, Josh, if it was a high school reunion type scene, love that vibe. That would uh, get me to sign up. Uh, A couple people are texting in saying, uh, adult prom, so it's basically just going out. You know? No. You and your significant other go out. It's the same thing. No, it is not. At least you, my wife and I don't dress up, no. go dancing. I don't pin a corsage. Anything. We're not when you go out with your wife, yeah, punch. you're not putting on... No, stop comparing it to just a regular night out, because it's not a regular night out. Yeah, and it's not my classmates that are there with me. <laughs> it's silly. I don't know why people are getting all pissy. Okay, Wapple, back to your nightmare. You're not alone. You know that, right? You're not alone. Mm-hmm. Many people have had prom nightmares, uh, including P isn't funny, P is P, Jesus. Uh, He got asked to prom at a different school, and his date banged the dude. Uh, His date at the after party hooked up with a different dude and had sex with that man uh, right in front of him. Oh. oh, at least you got a show. <laughs> uh, dude, that's terrible. You know, you didn't, did you know that your date was off having sex in another room? No. You didn't know. This she, guy she had to watch, this guy had to mm-hmm. watch it happen. That sounds like one hell of a party. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Colostomy bag Jesus. Uh, he said, prom sucked. I planned out a great night, dinner, dance, hotel, drinks. We had gone on a couple great dates. I thought it He thought he was going to lose his V-card that night. When I went to pick her up, he says her boyfriend was, her boyfriend from Iowa was there and found out they'd been together for two years. Why didn't she tell him that she had an Iowegian boyfriend for two years? Weird. Yeah, that's awful to do to somebody. Right, you know, right on the night. He's he's there to pick her up. Let's go, baby. And there's an Iowegian. I mean, that might even be worse than what you went through, Wapple. Yeah, having to watch something like that. <laughs> yeah. Maybe he didn't believe her. Like, psh, yeah, right. Like, you have a boyfriend that lives in Iowa. Right. I hit, who knows? But Colossomy Bag <laughs> Jesus said it really sucked when he pulled up and saw that Iowegian. Uh, and again, um, my pal Wang, uh, oh, no. he has a prom nightmare story. Wapple, you tell me what you would prefer. The way your prom night played out, you go to the party, you, you, your date disappears, she's having sex, she gets pregnant. Uh, would that be worse? Or 
I mean, Wang's date left him at the prom. Oh, boy. You know, for everyone to see. <laughs> she goes from sitting with him to never acknowledging his existence for the rest of the evening right in front of everybody. Uh, yeah, that's brutal. And I'll tell you what. He's still having trouble getting over it. Oh, is he? Oh, poor guy. <laughs> to this day. <laughs> Just has flashbacks of slow dances he by himself. Does. He does. <laughs> I, did, I didn't have a bad time at prom, but it just was kind of boring, I thought, more than anything. Yeah, I usually left after about an hour or so, like went, like waited for my friends to get there, said hi to them, maybe danced once or twice, and then thought, all right, uh, after party time, yeah. somewhere where we, we can actually, you know, drink out in the open, I guess, not, not hiding the flask under the dress. Yeah, see, I wouldn't know. I never went to a prom, but I can totally understand uh, why... Uh, Josh, why you might have thought the event was boring. You can't be drinking beer, can you, right there at the prom? Nope. No. No, you mm-hmm. can't be smoking cigarettes and marijuana, and uh, you can't be acting like you would at a normal high school party. So I probably would have found it boring as well. I remember I, when we right got out of high school, you know, you have that uh, all-night lock-in party? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, we went to somewheres in Minneapolis all night long. They had a casino. They had a live band. They had plenty of food. They had karaoke, the whole thing. We all went to that, and I remember being so uncomfortable that the, that that we weren't binge drinking. <laughs> I didn't know what to do. What do I do? Do I drink a water? What? what I, I loved so... the lock-in. Did you have fun? I, I, I thought it was great. It, it was boring. Like, like I, I, said, I didn't drink or anything, but so you didn't have any fun at all. I thought I it was mean, super it, cool. It was okay. It just it, it was mostly boring. I, I got skipped, kicked out of mine. Yeah, I skipped <laughs> ours. We went to the casino and got drunk. Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought you meant the lock-in was at the actual casino. <laughs> no. Okay. No, I mean, no I was that ex- was at our school. I just mm-hmm. chose not to go. I was sure. excited to go because I, I loved a lot of my f- classmates and whatnot, but it's just, I was, it was like, I would imagine it was like uh, the early stages of dependence on alcohol. You know what I mean? Because I just, I did not know what to do with myself that we weren't behaving the way we normally behaved when we were all together in a group. Where, why were you kicked out, Ash? Uh, I brought booze in. <laughs> oh, that'll do it. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I had the same thought too, Nick. I was like, I don't want to be around all these people for like, oh, geez, what is it, like 10 hours and be sober? That sounds awful. Well, I mean, yeah, but by the last few hours, I was just begging the sun to come up. You know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> it, it was. It was just nothing that I enjoyed doing. None of that was allowed at that event. So, Do they do those anymore? Lock-ins? No clue. I have no idea. I don't hmm. remember my kids doing that. Maybe they just didn't want to go. I guess it's not really a good concept anymore nowadays. Why not? Oh, with the uh, shootings and stuff like that, yeah, locking get... people inside. I don't know. I mean, yeah, I don't remember if the doors were actual, oh. actually locked, but yeah, they called it that. I yeah, there's just do. teachers standing guard playing security officers. That's, that's what we had. Mm-hmm. All the doors were locked, and they were literally security guards. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. We definitely didn't have security guards. You were not allowed to leave early. Yeah, ours wasn't either. Oh. You could not leave prom early. No, you couldn't leave the lock-in the lock-in. early. Oh, yeah, I don't know if that was a rule or not. It must have been, because I stayed till the bitter end. <laughs> <laughs> I just I thought, what, did, what have I just done? I've stayed up all night long, and I don't feel any better than I did at the beginning of the night. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Up at the crack of dawn, Jesus said his buddy and I, our buddy and he didn't go to prom. They were in charge of the after party, though. But the problem was they got so drunk, they passed out and locked everyone else out of the house so there was no after. Oh. <laughs> Son of a bitch. It can happen oh. to the best. We got to skate. Yeah, we do. Before we go, congratulations to Blazed Buds Jesus. Seven years being off meth today. Congrats oh to you. Uh, Wrestling Dad Jesus tacked in a shout-out to his oldest kid, Eli, for going yard last night for the first time this season. Go awesome blossoms, he says. Oh, that's a blooming prairie. Blooming prairie. Happy 30th to Frosted Flake Jesus and all the brother and sisterhood. Have a great rest of your Wednesday. The 93X Half-Assed Morning Show. 93. The 93X Half-Assed Morning Show podcast is sponsored by Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. New episodes drop each weekday. If your podcast platform has ratings, go ahead and give us five stars and uh, maybe give our enemies one. Thanks, and here's a word from our sponsor. Install a new furnace and AC combo and save up to $3,000 with manufacturer and utility rebates along with Standard Heating's discount. Visit standardheating.com.